Hello. Hey, can I get a look at the guy, everyone? Oh, God. I was up early today. <laughs> My son phoned me. Was it about eightish this morning? Oh, God. So, then about half eight, I thought, you know what, I'm awake now. So I got up. And then, their little bark. He's got a key to my flat. Right? Well, I've gone to have a shower and wash my hair and everything. And I've come to him. And I was only, I was partly dressed. Partly dressed. Because I thought, I'll dry my hair and then I'll get fully dressed. Like, get my trousers on, my top on. Right? Well, while I was having my shower and whatever, he's tried phoning me. And because he got no answer, he thought, right, I'm over that way. We'll pop in and see if Mum's okay. Yep. So I'm on the, in the living room with my hair dryer going. I didn't hear the door go. I didn't hear, see my cat go running out the living room to the door. Because that's what my cat's like. Hi there, Robin. Red flags all the way, yes. Right? And... And all of a sudden, I was just about to stand up. Right, when I heard my son go, hello. I'm not joking. I nearly hit the ceiling. My heart leapt out my chest. I thought, you B. You know what I mean? And I said, he said, well, we tried phoning you, Mum. I said, have you tried calling me as you come through my flipping doors? He's like, Mum, are you there? You know what I mean? But then again, I may not have heard because I did have my hair dryer on. I swear to God, I'm putting an alarm on my door. So that if anyone walks past my door, past my, into my flat, gets, a, gets the key like my son and walks in, yes. And he'll set off an alarm as he walks past it. I need to guard this. The stinky feet, did you see what they did? Yes, I did. I saw it. Yep. Now, he, I was thinking when I saw that, right, Robbie, that how did he know, right, listen to this, how did he know that was Ballhorn's car, Ballhorn Bet, Ballhorn Betty's car? And I'll tell you how. Because he was there in that car park watching the police talk to her. Right? Because the police come, didn't they? So she had to go out the car. And she went and spoke to him. Right? Because apparently some YouTubers or whoever, I'm not, I don't know, had put a... No, they don't want him found. They don't want him found. I put in... A phone call saying she was trespassing, she was going on people's properties, and she wasn't. So he sat in his car and he watched the police pull up behind her car. So she's got out of the car, spoke to the police a little while later, come back. And she's in the car talking about this, about the incident with the police and everything. Yeah? And he pulled up. And as she put, if she, did, if she hadn't had that uh, flyer in her hand, We'd have seen it even better. We'd have seen him even better pull up behind her car. Right? As she took the fly down, you'd just seen the end of his car, the back of his car pulling away from hers. I thought, you crafty effer. You crafty fecker. She didn't. All she was doing was putting flies out. That's all she's done. She's not even gone on any, any searches, to my belief, to my understanding. Right? She hasn't even gone on any searches. So, and it's never YouTubers. And she asked them, and apparently the police said it was, they had phone call from a YouTuber. It was a YouTuber. So... But good on her. But now, we've been saying it from the beginning. Every time anyone's been scared off, it's to do with CP, KP, all the Barisocks and their family and whatever. 
we've said this. Hi, Karen. Well, she is. She just go out searching. She just go out searching. But she was on her own, so she wasn't going to go out searching on her own. She just, it's like her, she just wanted to get a lay of the land. Right? And so by doing what she did, she got a lay of the land and she needs to know what areas have been searched because she don't waste the time going over an area that has already been searched. Which is understandable. But I thought, oh my lord. What a lot. So it is then. And then, and you know, how, you know what else? Then she pulled him up. Then she pulled up behind him. <laughs> she had that crystal clear t shirt on with CP's face on it, yeah? Hi, M cars. She is a protester, but she will do searches as well. She will do searches, but she won't do them on her own. I think she's going to do one with, um, oh, what's her name has been going out from the beginning? Um, Terry Lynn. Right? But Terry Lynn goes out on the night times, a lot of them. Because I suppose she works. She shocked him. Yep. Crystal clear. <laughs> right? And um, so now, and it's the way he said, now, if he, if he hadn't been following her, right, he wouldn't have said this, and this is what got it. Prove it. If you're not following someone, you're not going to say prove it. Because in my eyes, that's them saying, yeah, I was following you, so prove it. She shocked him. So, I thought it was so funny, you know, that she had that t-shirt on. <laughs> I would order some of them, them t-shirts, but I'm in the UK, and if I wore that over here, people wouldn't, it wouldn't mean nothing, anything to anyone. It's more like Everclear. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, yeah, they're hiding something. Robin, they're definitely hiding something. What? We don't know. And we've just got to hope and keep our fingers crossed that the law enforcement are doing their job. Now, did you hear what the law enforcement said to her as well before she got back, before we left her? Watch your back. Watch your back. So he knows what they're up to. And every day she'd been out putting flyers out, she was having police called on her. Every time she did a live where she was putting flyers out, she was getting... Yeah, it was creepy, Karen. I are hiding Sebastian, they did something... They are hiding Sebastian, they did the same thing. Yeah, they've done the same thing to JLR, to uh, those, who was that other guy with the boats? That young lad and another YouTuber was going out on their boat and they warned them. They kept warning them and saying, look, we know where you live or things like that. Too. And that's what was putting them off, the fact that they was coming out with these threats. But what I can't understand is why wouldn't they say who it was that was threatening them? Right? Well, on Betty would, even if she hadn't got it on camera, she'd tell them, she'd say, I'm, it was such and such. She'd say everything. Right? So, anyway, the past few weeks, Jolly too, and Nina, yep. Yes? Well, I have ordered myself a little type, a handout recorder, right? Because some of these interviews I've been going through and I've been transcribing the interviews, right? 
uh, like literally like say like on this one we're going through smiley i've got smiley then what she says then i've got chris and what he says and then i've got katie and what she says in order right and this one we're going through it was a three hour uh, live you know how long it took me to transcribe it type it all out over a week but that wasn't doing every day that was doing like three to four hours a day of transcribing it well didn't terry lynn get her tires slashed i think it was terry lynn that got her tires slashed But what it doesn't it doesn't i cannot understand it's like apparently people in the area as well in the neighborhood of where sebastian lee was living right i say was living because he's not there at the moment and i can't see him ever coming back to that house even if he's found alive really I didn't know about that in cars. I know that when Terry Lynn was out doing a search, she caught a car that had gone past and then come back again, right, on, on a camera. Oh, punctured, yep. And then when she got back to her car, a tyre or tyres, I don't know how many, whether it was one or two or four, Right, I've been punctured. Right, now she don't say where she's going out on her searches. She doesn't. And I don't blame her. She never has. Right? She don't go live. I don't think she goes live anymore when she does her. She does it. She videos it. She records it. And then puts a video out. But I don't think she goes live anymore on them. Because if she does, then they can see people like that bunch of toe rags would know where she was. And the last search she did, you know when she found the leggings, the um, tracksuit bottoms? Someone actually on a live somewhere on another channel or whatever had put out where she was searching. There's no emotion in all these interviews. They are seeking a narrative. It is not normal at all for a mother. I, was, I still think Chris did the unthinkable and will frame Katie. I don't know. I want, well, I've been saying, and this was before Bullhorn Betty said anything. I said a while ago, unless I have got it on paper, like, a clocking car, a sheet, a worksheet with his name on it, what time he arrived and what time he left, right, on this Monday morning. Well, it's Saturday, the Sunday and the Monday, if there was work in the weekend. I want to see all those, especially the Sunday and the Monday. Right? Before I would believe that he was at work at 5.15. I don't believe that. There's no evidence to say, there's nothing there. Like, even the gates. Right? Now, I know JLR did, um, oh God, a video fairly early on. Fairly early on. And he was outside that works. Right? And it was on the evening. Right, early evening, because it, by the time it finished, it had gone dark. So we're still in like the winter months. I think he did it on Sunday. Right, I'll ask a question to you all. How many of you in chat here think he came? Do you believe he came home Sunday night from? The steakhouse. Because there's one of, one of two things. He either didn't come home from the steakhouse, 
He did come home from the steakhouse. And something happened in the house. And she took him out of the house by car. Via her car in the morning. And did a handover. Yeah. Or. Something happened on the Sunday night. And. Um, those lights we've seen. And I know that was not a. A. Garbage truck in that video. It was not. It is a car. It's definitely a car. Why? So, did they transfer him from the house through the back door on the Sunday night down that little gully way, that little ditch? Right? Towards that car, hand him over, and then come back again. Come back to the house. And I feel sorry for Seth, because he's got to realise now. He's going to be realising he's not going to see his son no more. He's got to be. And you know what makes me, my stomach turns even more, even more, is the fact that he's got his daughter there. And that Bullhorn Betty got a photo sent her of Katie holding that little girl in her arms, cuddling her and smiling. That makes my stomach churn. It really, really does. So he has, he was home and he was probably made Kate believe she did. He was home and he probably made Kate believe she, he, she did because she was drunk in her drink. Really? Really, Karen? Is that what you think? I don't know if he was a homer. I don't think he was. But then again, we don't know anything, do we? Hold on, I'm just getting my seat comfy. We don't know anything. All we know is he had a fun day. Fun, fun, fun. All day long Sunday. They did this, they went to... They went, got some groceries there, the snacks. They went to BJ's, they went bowling. Uh, they came home, put the snacks, 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 snacks. Snacks, can't get that word out of my head now. Snacks <laughs> away, and then went out for dinner. Yeah, in, in that, he says that a lot. Now, you know what? When I was typing this out the other day, I actually hit my head on my cupboard door. Because I didn't really, I opened my cupboard door and normally I shut it straight away. And I did it and I turned around and hit the side of my head, top of my head, just on the corner. And it flipping hurt. But then about half hour later, I've come in and I've started doing this transcript. Right? And uh, I'll share it with you some of this this transcript I've got. Right? And hopefully it'll come up. Yes. And anyway, so I started typing this transcript and I was actually starting to feel, feel, feel sorry for... Katie. Right? And on the evening, I thought, oh, this can't be right. I went out and hit my head on the cupboard again, purposely, to knock some sense into it, because I thought, no, nope, no, nope, she was involved. She's the only one in that house, I'm sorry. The dog sleep with Katie when he's not, uh, uh, exactly. So why would she put him in the, in the cage? 
He said, go to bed and put dogs in quiet. Yeah. He wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. But this is just one. I think I've got three transcripts. I'm not sure now. Hold on, I'll check if I can. Hold on, I'm just checking. See how many transcripts I've got. I've got that one. I've got the first transcript of Judges, the first one they did. What's this one? Um, is this the, uh, uh, which one is this? Come on. I think it was the Chronicles of Olivia. Right, so I've done the Chronicles of Olivia. I've just finished. You no, know, I did the first interview they did with Duchess. Oh, they made many slips, cos M cos. They made many slips. Right, and it's so. And you know what gets me is when I was typing this up. He was talking about co-parenting. Right? And the fact is said, and when we're all on the same page, it, it, it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. I thought, what page is that, Chris? Your page? Then everyone does what you want them to do. Because I can't see you say, I can't see. Chris is a mother effer. Literally, most women with kids. Well, his first three wives didn't have kids, did they? I know the fourth wife did. I don't think the first three did. I know Rachel is one wife, ex-wife. She's got two children now from her, last, from her marriage. You know what I mean? And I think it's in this interview that I actually talk about Rachel. Right? They spoke about a lot in this interview. A lot. But you've got to also think... Um, hold on. Let's just close that down. Like, I've got this in writing, right? I've got it all set up in writing. And I'm going to... All, but there's some interviews where I can't get the... Because what I've been doing is I've had my uh, page open and the video open and a split page. And I've been had the uh, subtitles coming up so that I could read, type what the subtitles were saying, right? And But there's a couple of interviews that don't have subtitles that come up. So I thought, right, I'm going to buy myself a little... A little small, like, recorder. And I'm going to play these interviews on my laptop in the game. And I'm going to record them on there. That way I can control how fast it goes, when to stop it, without having to keep going to my mouse to stop the uh, video. I can just click a button and pause it. Click again, start, you know what I mean? And... So I've already got one of them, and it's coming tomorrow. So I'm going to test drive it out tomorrow. But I am going to, I'm going to do the same with Seth's as well. I'm going to do all Seth's interviews. That is done. And get them transcribed, typed out, a bit like this. Right, because if you look, you can see I've uh, got Smiley. Right, then Katie. And so on, right? And the reason I've got this bit highlighted because that part the one I want to listen to, because you've got to hear how she comes into this. You know how Katie is so sweet and demure, and I butter wouldn't melt in her mouth. This is the Katie we know, and this is Katie you want to listen to because. I'm, going, I'm just going to pull the video up ready. I'm not sure if I can do a split screen on it. I think I can. Right. 
Uh, where is it? Uh, I'll go to my downloads. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because all their interviews I'm finding and I'm downloading them onto my laptop. So then I can type them out myself. Because sometimes I find... Sometimes I find by typing it out, I learn a lot more. Right? And to be honest with you, when I first watched this interview... It didn't, it didn't, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, hit me, her, how she spoke. But she come into this interview like a bull in a china shop. She was not happy. She was not happy. And, um, I'm not going to do a split screen. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. I'm just going to show the video. Part of the video, then go to that part of the script. Pull the script back up. Get up. Otherwise, it's too small. The script is too small, small for anyone to see. So, I decided to... Right? And I thought... This interview was the most informative of it. Because I, I just think, even though the interviews they did, the first interview they did with Duchess, was very informative. I just think she wouldn't let them... She wasn't asking all the questions that was being put up. And I was uh, sort of like... Um, vetting, vetting the questions. I just felt like that because it was, it was too nice. The questions were too nice, if you know what I mean. Be nice, be nice. But, um, no, I, I don't like Chris. And I was okay with Chris and Katie for a bit. Even after that first news interview they did. And that's the one I'm going to get on a tape recorder tomorrow. Right, I'm going to record that and put it on a tape recorder. My little... Uh, record the thing and um, even after that interview even though that that was, had some major red flags in it this one is even, I think even more red flags even more because they've spoke about so much it went on but then again right this is why I won't have pe I could not have anyone on my live and do an interview. I really couldn't. Because I'm the sort of person that would go, yeah, I'll pull up one of the questions, right? Let's find a question. Right, uh Oh, God. Yeah, got a few things I've got to alter on this, but it's like they ask a question, and instead of just saying, "Okay, so who else was in the house with you?" Why? What was it now? Was this one question? And she's going like, "I don't know. Perhaps um, there was someone I." In the house with you, uh, did you? And she's literally giving them the answers, giving them possible answers, replies. I'm like, for smiley, smiley, stop. Just ask the question and period, stop. Don't go into go. What I mean, it, it could be this or it could be that. You know, don't. And this is why that this. Live was so long because she spoke so much about on one question. She'd ask a question, but then go into a bit more detail about that question, break that question down for them. And I'm not joking, yesterday it's like smiling, 
If you break this question down once more, I'm going to smack you wrong. Oh, really? That's how bad it was getting to me. That's how bad it was getting to me. And then, it, and Chris, you ask him a question. I'll answer all the questions. Did he feck? Did he feck? He, he danced around the question. I'm not joking. I think one answer was like half a page. Half a page. When a mother talks about her child and you are frightened and think and talk about your child normally, you stop and cry in between. Yeah. She's not... That's why, that's why I had to go and hit my head again on the cupboard door. To knock some sense back into my head. Because I thought, I was getting suckered into this, typing this interview up. I was really getting sucked into their narrative. You know what I mean? I thought... What is what the hell is happening here? I could not believe it because I'm, I've not believed them from that first interview. Right? I didn't believe the first interview. I didn't see the first one with Duchess. I seen it. I first interview I saw was with the news WSMV4. That's it. WSMV4. They were the ones who did the first interview with them. And then that one come up with Duchess, so I watched that. But I just felt Duchess was vetting the questions, her mods were. I don't know if she was, I don't know. It was a good interview, it was good live. Because she's got that such soothing voice, hasn't she, Duchess? And I tell you, she needs to do a podcast, right? And where she does nighttime stories, maybe crime stories, because I like to, I go to bed and I listen to crime programs all day long. I'm listening to crime all day long, right? And she would be so soothing to listen to and just doze off to sleep with, because her voice is so soothing. And it was a good interview. And I'm now typing up the second interview she did with them. Right? Don't know how long that will be before I get that one finished, because that's a three-hour one as well. So what I might do, I might not do any more on that, and just record it on the little dictaphone sort of thing. And then I can type, like, I can go to the park and sit there with my laptop and listen to it, stop it, and type it, you know what I mean? I don't have to have the internet thing to have, to get the dictation. So, let's take this down a minute, hold on. See if I can do this first. Well, I'm going to get to the beginning, because the beginning bit is where Katie comes in. And I don't think she was planning on Katie coming in. I think she thought it was just Chris coming in. And apparently it was last minute, because she oh, she was on a, li a live stream with Justin, Justin, when she got um, a message from him. Saying, would you go live now? Right, so she's had to come off Justin's live. So I think Justin shut his live down and they all come over to Smiley's. Because she then had to get the, the description up and get the live put out there, ready for people to watch. Right? And um, come on. And it was last minute, so she didn't really have any questions written down. So fair go to her, you know what I mean? She wasn't prepared for that. It was off the cuff. So she did ask some good questions. I thought, ooh, good one, Smiley. Ooh, another good one there, Smiley. Ooh, Smiley, keep getting with these questions, please, keep doing it. 
I didn't like the interview when she was allowing Chris to answer all the questions since to, Chris seems to put people on this back. Which interview was that? Because Chris answered all the questions in all the interviews. <laughs> um, was it the one with Smiley or another one? Because Chris did answer a lot of these questions, but Katie did as well. And it was just the way she came into this at the very beginning. It's like a bull in your china shop. But I will eventually have them all typed out, Duchess. Yes. Yeah. Katie doesn't... I noticed that Katie doesn't answer a lot of questions on, on that first interview. And on the second interview, I'm only like something like 10, 15 minutes in. And he hasn't even come into the live yet on that one. Uh, well, they're just talking about Sebastian in question and she's just answering the questions that her members or whatever are putting out. But, um, yeah, I noticed on the first one, did I, watch, I didn't really watch the second one. Uh, I didn't really watch this second one. So this second one of hers, of um, Duchess, it's all new to me. Not now, it isn't, because half of what they've, half the questions being asked have already been asked on other lives. But, um, Chris, it's like this was mentioned in this smiley one. Why don't, she goes, smiley goes to him, goes, she goes to ask a question, then she goes, oh, don't, Katie, you've got a voice. Why do you answer some of these questions? Why are you always letting Chris, why is Chris always answering these questions for you? And Chris was like, uh, 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 oh, oh. go ahead, fire away. Katie, answer the questions if you want. It's like he's given her permission to talk. That's the impression I got off this interview with Chris and Katie. He, he was giving her permission to talk. Hey, go ahead, Kate, you can talk. Go on. You know what I mean? And I thought, oh, God, you're so controlling. Woman, can you not see he's controlling? He's so controlling. And there's so much I picked up while typing this out. That's what I mean. Because I was typing it out. And I was actually seeing the words, not just listening to the words, I was seeing the words as well. I'm thinking, this is thinking in a lot more than it did when I first watched the interview. Now, I've watched this interview several times. So, but it's like last night, you know when I was watching, doing that live last night about um, Jay Slater, and I noticed... Uh, Lucy May was in that video. She wasn't, she's supposed to have left early. Now in that video, it shows him leaving that club. But just before he leaves, there's a photo, uh, there's a clip of him with Lucy May, right? And someone actually come on onto my YouTube channel and left a comment saying, that's a good Good spot there. You caught that one. I thought, wow, it's just the fact that I have seen this interview how many times, this video so many times. So it's like this, I've seen this video so many times now that I'm now picking up on other things, what they're saying and how it sounds, if you get what I mean. So, because years ago I did a counselling course. It was, a, it was actually an access course to counselling. And what it teaches you is you've got to love yourself. You've got to like yourself because, before you can help anyone else. You've got to know who you are before you can help anyone else. Right? And it talks about act, showing empathy and being actively listening. So that's why when I watch a video now, I will watch it three, two, three, four, five times because I want to actively listen to what they are saying. And if it means typing it out at the same time, I will do that. 
so that I can pick up on what they are actually saying and how they are saying it. It's just the same thing to Seth at the vigil. He put Seth on his spout to say, let's put our egos aside. Yeah. Yes. Right? And then they didn't, they didn't help anyway. And the reasons Chris said he didn't, they wouldn't work with him then was because he then went on a live and accused Katie of not being truthful. Well, I'm sorry, Chris. She's a lying effing bitch. She's hiding something. You're hiding something. Your family's hiding something. And it... We may not find out what it is, but I can guarantee you, with the pressure that people are putting on this case, the police are not going to be able to let this just drop by, because people aren't going to let this go. They're not going to want this to be another Summer Moon Utah Wells case, a three years down the road, and still nothing. You know what I mean? Because at some point, someone needs to be held accountable. For Sebastian, right? Be it Katie or Chris or Seth. I don't think it's Seth, but I say Seth, but I don't think he's got any, he's got anything to do with this, right? But I also think, like BHB said, so the uh, social services, the child services department, they need to be start being held accountable. Two cases now. In Tennessee, where both cases had child services, yeah? In both cases, the children have gone missing and they have not been found. Peter Hyatt said what? What did Peter Hyatt say, Karen? Because I watched a lot of his, I don't know what he said. I can't remember what he said on a lot of them. Because I like Peter Hyatt, he is good. And you don't do it for the money, you don't have his channel up for money. You know what I mean? He doesn't. He does it so that people can be informed about what to look for and what his views are on what they say. Not on how they behave, but on what they say. Yes, Katie is key. No, Seth didn't say it. no. Kate is the key. Seth said she's hiding, she's not telling the whole truth. Seth said she's not telling the whole truth. Right? She's hiding something. He, you know what I mean? Okay. He hasn't been married to her for eight years. Right? He's been divorced from her for eight years. Right? But he knew that woman beforehand. And he's the only one, not even Chris knows her better than, Seth knows her better than Chris. And she's conniving, because I'll tell you something now, she had a rough childhood, and I feel bad for her, for that reason. I do. She didn't have an easy life. And she plays on that. She really plays on that. Hoping to get sympathy. Well, I had such a hard... She don't want to talk... I don't want to talk about my life. That's the past. I don't have nothing to do with my family. You know what I mean? But... People like, in her case as well, are very conniving. Because they know how to get what they want. If they want something, they will get it. So she's very conniving, I think. She knows what she's doing. She's playing playing a game of chess. Right? She's playing that game of chess. Well, I'm sorry, sweetheart. Sebastian's arm is playing that game of chess with you. But we've got Sebastian behind us because he's showing us how to play this goddamn game. I don't know how to play chess. But he's showing us.
Nice of doing that. Don't go live every night about Sebastian. Not because of the, um, all them liable, them letters and emails that we've been sent out. That has nothing to do with it. It was just the fact that there was nothing new coming out of the case. So I thought, well, it's pointless me beating a dead horse every night when there's other children and other cases that need to be looked at. So I'll just keep it to a Monday and a Friday. And if I if I don't feel like talking about it on a Monday, then I'll leave it to the Friday. But it's normally Monday and Friday I'll talk to Sebastian. I like to keep it to two days a week. But Katie is definitely the key. She's the key holder. She knows what happened that night. And people people say, do you think his mum and dad did help him out? Oh, yes. If he needed help, his mummy and daddy would help him out. Because in their eyes, their boy, her boy can't do nothing wrong. Nothing. This is another mother whose, whose son could go out, half kill a person or kill a person, on a live a person, right? And this is the sort of mother that will sit there and say, oh, but my lad, my son's a good boy. He never gets into any trouble. He's a good boy. Right? She's that sort of mother. The sort of mother that we're dealing with with Jay Slater. My boy's a good boy. He's... He's a good boy. He just gets mixed up with the wrong people. Yeah, we know. We know how good a boy he is. Right? So this is Chris's mother. She's that sort of mother. She pam she's actually pampering to him. And giving him what he wants. And it's sick. It's sick. And I think they've just made a big mistake with doing what they've done with Bullhorn Betty. Because now, she's even more adamant. And on that live, I think Seth was watching as well. So I think Seth may have seen it as well. So I thought, keep it up. Just keep... It's like people go, we need to stop them talking on... They need to stop coming on YouTube lives. No! No, let them talk. Let Chris and Katie, well, Chris, talk. Let them talk. Because the more they talk, the more they're digging. Keep digging. Keep digging, Chris, because that's what you do. At the moment, they've gone quiet. Why? Because they've got his daughter there. But I can, I will guarantee you, once his daughter goes back home, He'll be back on YouTube. Tell you why? Because he cannot stand not being the centre of attention. He can't stand it. This is why he used to watch all the YouTube channels, whatever anyone was saying about him. As, as it's mentioned in this interview, someone said, why are you bothered about what people are saying about you? Should you not be more worried and bothered about finding Sebastian? You know what I mean? Which is true. I wouldn't care if people was on YouTube saying, she's the worst mother I've ever seen. I'd be going, that's fine, carry on. At the end of the day, I'm looking for my child. Right? And I would literally be out there looking for my child. Day and night. Day and night. I would not give up until I had found, or the police, or someone had found my child. And what has Katie done? Uh, I'm trying to think. What has Katie done? Oh yeah. Packed a bag, got in a car, and went down to a five-wheeler. That's what Katie's done. Right? I think Chris was the guy who called C's channel from Texas the other day. C, C, C. Who's C? <laughs> oh, 
I can't remember. I can't, I don't, I don't know if I've seen it. You see, it's all right, mention the channel, it's all right. So I, I, the other day I was talking and I, I said something and I went, oh God, sugar. That YouTube, that's my YouTube talk. The bad one, the bad one. Oh, yeah, her. Her, yeah. Yeah. It was. He's got this voice changing thing that he changed where it changes his voice. He puts different acts. We know it's him. Claiming that clue, whatever, knows as well. You know what I mean? She knows who it is. She plays along with it. But you know what gets me? She was all Seth. Right? All Seth. And then she spoke to Seth on that construction site. She was all Seth. And then she did a, a she had a long phone call with Chris and Katie. And then she was all Chris and Katie. I'm thinking, what? When I first go, I thought, no, 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 you must be, you must have the wrong person. You've got to have the wrong person. Right? And then I've seen more and more people talking about it. And I thought, oh my lord. So you know what I went and did? I watched one of their lives. I watched it on replay. On um, quick speed. Right? Just so I could get through it quicker. And when I finished, I come off there and unsubscribe to her. Not because she friended Chris, but because of how they spoke about Sebastian. How they were laughing and making fun of him. And I thought, are you serious? You're going to let... You're letting people come on your channel and say this about a missing child. No. Yes, we want to hear about Sebastian. We all like hearing Seth talk about Sebastian. And what his little, and what his little, what he used to like to do, how he did, how he did certain things and his little funny, quirky little things that he did. You know what I mean? We all love to hear that. But we don't, you don't hear Seth taking the fun out of her, taking the piss out of her, Sebastian. If I was a grieving mother, would you go on the news wearing a Harley? No, no, I wouldn't. In fact, I would be on the TV if I was a, if I was a um, grieving mother or mother. The only reason I would be on a TV news channel is to not answer questions, not answer questions. I'd have one statement to put out, and that is, you mother effers better give me back my effing son before I effing come down and find you and kick your effing jewelry. Sort of thing. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be answering questions. I'll be putting out a statement. Bring my son back. Give me my son back. You know what I mean? No way would I be sitting there for two or three hours doing interviews and answering questions. I would just be, there's my statement every time. That's what I've got to say. I just want my son back. Give me my son back. Simple. Name my other five minute slot set up for me. It wouldn't take me five minutes to say what I wanted. I'd be a bit like, have you ever seen that film, Ransom? With, um, what's his name? I can't think of his name now. With the uh, uh, actor in, I can't think of his name. Oh. Right? And it's about, where his son gets kidnapped. 
and the hold is sung for ransom. And so he gets the money together. He's got the money, he's a big man, he's got money. And they go out to the exchange point and he's supposed to get his son. And as he got out of the car, he got out of the car and he said, where's my son? You're supposed to tell me where my son was. Tell me where my son was. Well, after that, this guy rang off and the police came in and they injured him and they actually um, killed him. Why? So then they phoned, phoned again. And he's on his way to make this ransom, hang this ransom on it over again. When you see an advert come up on one of their big channel TV things in their shop window. And he phoned his lawyer up and whatever, and his partner up at his works, at his company, and told and, uh, called to call a TV radio news station to be ready to go live. And he got there and he took all this money out on the table and he went, right, there, here is, I don't know how much it was now, say 20000 Here's $20,000 here. I will make that. No, $20,000 now on the head of the person who has kidnapped my son. This $20,000 will go to whoever tells me has got my son. Right? So he kind of like flipped it around. And um, this one guy was going past. And then he'd come out again and he said, you know what? I'll up it to $30,000. And so I... And let's go, will you pack this in? He went, no, because either way, I'm not going to get my son back alive. I'm not going to get him back alive. He did get him back alive. But that's only because he put so much pressure on the other people by putting this bounty on their heads. That was literally fleeing. One go this way, one go that way. Two of them got shot, then another one got shot. You know what I mean? And this is the sort of thing I would do. That is what I would do. I'd be going, £20,000 reward? Well, I'll tell you what. You want this reward for my son? This reward is going to whoever tells me who's got my son. Because I will come and kick your door down. I will literally kick doors in. Literally. I don't care what the police say. I will be kicking the fucking doors in. And the only way they would stop me, the police, is to lock me up. Right? It's to lock me up. Because I would be out there kicking the flipping doors down. This is why I can't understand her as a mother is not doing that. Right. But just listen to the beginning of this interview. I'm going to go back just a little bit. Oh, God, too far now. No. No. I'll leave it out there. I'll start from there because I know she comes in like a bull in a china shop. Right. Oh. Right, I, I sent another link. I don't know if they have to go out and come back in or what, but the device is not connected. It's not showing connected. Okay, are you there now? Can you show me your face? Listen to where we are. Oh, there you are. Thank you. Okay, I see Katie. Hold on. Hi. Hello. Okay. Um, Hello. I'm, I'm kind of surprised, but um, thank you and welcome. For coming up here, I appreciate that. Um, how are you, how are you feeling today? Pretty terrible, to be honest with you. Twenty four days in, and there's a bunch of horrible things being said, and a bunch of misinformation being spread, and my son is still missing. And so it's it's horrible. There's not a better word for it, to be honest with you. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm glad you come up here and I will, um, I ask my chat to please be respectful and I will let you say what you feel and, 
you know, again, and I wasn't expecting this, but you're more than welcome to say what you feel. And if it's okay, you know, um, yeah. I would tell my chat, be respectful. Yeah. But I wouldn't fucking pamper to them. No way on this fucking living earth would I pamper to parents like them. And I wouldn't vet the questions. If the question's being asked already, then yeah, fair enough, just flip past that one, you know what I mean? But I think a lot of them were, you know, I think even on this here, there was, she was going through the questions and at one stage she couldn't see her chat. So she, she had to go out and come back in. But it was just, really? So listen I, again. I would like to ask some questions, but uh, I would like to talk about Sebastian and, um, you know, maybe we could just start there. Would that be okay? Yeah, I think Chris is still trying to join as well. Okay, I didn't know if he was, yeah, I didn't know. A lot of people are accusatory when we speak. It's, oh, it's a lie. Oh, it's not us. And really? Yeah. Well, the truth is, no matter what any of y'all think, I didn't do anything to my son. My husband didn't do anything to my son. We love him dearly, and we are doing everything that we can to try and find him and bring him home. And his father loves him dearly as well. Mm -hmm. Do you hear a tone of voice? Like in the interviews before, it's all sweeting, but a little melting a mouth sort of tone. This is such a Oh, I've had enough of people I'm going to tell them what for. This is the Katie we are hearing. And we're hearing more of it and more of it in the background on interviews. If you listen to some of the interviews, near the, the latest interviews I've done with Chris, you hear it in the background. She's not happy. Right? And it's like... It, maybe it's a smile as well. They go on. Where is he? Not in due case of making up my wanting neighbours. Okay. This is the bit I liked about Josh. When Josh come up. Right? But it's not for a while. I can't remember how far into it was. God, it was quite quite a way into it because this was like on um, page 18. You know what I mean? That like, it come into me. So, but in the interview, it seems a lot sooner. But you hear the tone in, and um, he won't say, he, he says, he will talk to me. He won't talk to me because men will not put up with him. He wouldn't come on that live that she was on a panel before this, right? She was on Justin's panel. And he seen someone put up a comment saying, why is it he won't talk, to, he'll talk to women, but he won't talk to men, right? And that's when he messaged her and said, right, let's go live, go live now. So she said, Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Okay, I can go live, but you got to give me half an hour at least because I've got to set it all up. Everything, I can't just go bump live and expect my people to turn up. They've got to have some knowledge that I'm going to go live. Right? But I would say, to them, even when my channel gets bigger, hopefully, don't ever think you're coming on my, ch my panel. And I will go easy on you because I fucking won't. I will not. I will not pamper to you. I'll be respectful, but like he says, he be respectful. He's brash, but he's respectful. I'm brash. I'm respectful. Believe me, I will not hold any questions my members or my subs were putting up. Right? A lot of them pay to have their questions read. Yeah? And um, I don't believe in that. I really don't. I don't believe they should be paying 
just to have their questions read. But you see, Smiley asked a lot of questions herself. And then she goes to the uh, the members and starts putting their questions out. I'm thinking, no, they've just paid you, Smiley. You should have been putting their questions out first. You know what I mean? And then, if you've got time at the end, which you always have time, then ask your questions. But she did ask some good questions. I must admit, Smiley, you did ask some good questions. So, let's continue. As I said, we're not watching it all. I'm just watching clips. Well, I, I, you know, there's a lot of questions that people have and a lot of what ifs. And, you know, I know sometimes it's, it's tough. I mean, I've seen a lot of cases like this and I know, I, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. Let me say that. I would not want to be in your shoes. I wouldn't want um, anybody to have to be in my shoes, to be honest with you. It's nothing any parent should ever have to go through. Right. Right. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've seen in my own family, um, you know, I've actually had a runaway and I ended up murder and I know it's not the same. It's not my child. Um, although I have lost a child and this is not about me. It's about Sebastian, but I will tell you, nobody should have to sit in your shoes. There's not words that I can say. Um, but also I do have an autistic son and I know many do. I'll drop it again. I'm dropping it again. I think she's having a bad signal. I don't know where she's at. Where she dropped out, and but she'll come back in. Wow. She may be where she can't get the signal good. There's Tom too. Oh, uh, it's, it's, give me a favor. I got to drop out of this. I got to make a phone call real quick, and I will be back. This is my okay. call. Why? Now, isn't it convenient? He's got a phone call from his daughter. Hmm. Right. Now, I'm sure phone calls with his daughter are, uh, well, I'll tell you what, Chris, if I was near you, I'd be saying, well, every, every night or every other night, I'll get your daughter to phone you at this time. Yeah? Before she goes to bed. Yeah? So, would he not have known that his daughter was due to phone that night? And if so... Why did he arrange to go live? Okay. Because he okay. doesn't, he works on weekends too a lot, so he can't just come home every weekend. But when he can, he does. He comes home and sees him. So yeah. They, actually, they have a pretty good relationship. Did he talk on the phone with Sebastian while he was at work? He does. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, Hey, wants to see if you can drop the link again. I think oh, okay. even yes, yes, absolutely. Well, hold on. Here we go. Gonna, I think we may have missed it here. Let's, let's look at this. There was something he said that made me question it. Why? Did I highlight it? No, oh, okay, I'm Just one minute. Well, now I'm going to share this because this bit here, let's get the colour. Oh God, go yellow. Uh, uh, oh yeah. It talks about, no, that isn't the bit I wanted to show you. Uh, it's about, uh, I don't feel anybody should be going to anybody's child. Um, right, is that it? I'm not sure. I think that might be. Hold on. Right. Here it is. Oh God, I'll get it again. This bit. Oh God. My mouse don't work properly, so I have to. Right, I'm going to zoom in. 
Isso aí foi tem sempre mentiu. You know when I say like that he won't talk to me? Right. This is when he comes back onto the live. He says, somebody says I won't talk to me. No, that, not that I don't want to talk, right? It's not that I don't want to talk to me. I have talked to more law enforcement, more at men, law enforcement men, agencies in the past 24 days and I probably ever talked to my entire life. Same thing goes for women. So no, I don't have a problem talking, t talking a man or talking to a woman. Uh, we're not talking about law enforcement. We're talking about YouTubers, right? And it goes on to say, she does have a voice. Yes, she does. Did you know T.R. said it was her he was talking to, not his daughter? No. I'm going to have to look all this up, you know. Why the hell are they using Chris's phone for the interview? Well, I'll tell you something about this interview as well. And I think it's disgusting. It's out of order. Because I understand that when you're up in these towers, you're not supposed to have your mobile phones with you. Right? I don't know how true that is, but... Anyway, he's up in them towers, them cranes. And he talks about near the end. Near the end. Well, I say near the end. You think it's coming to an end, but it's not. <laughs> right? And what it is, they've got Chris is at work. Right? On this interview, Chris is at work. And he says he is covering at the moment. He's covering for someone. And is what you hear in the background is a walkie-talkie sort of thing. What, what they use when they're up on the cranes. So they can say, okay, yeah, okay, I'll pick that load up, yes. Where do you want this load put? Okay. You know what I mean? So they can talk to the ground crew. They're like 50 foot up in the air or whatever it is. Exactly, Karen. Why is, and he, he does mention this. That we, he can talk about Sunday night from 9.30 onwards through to Monday. He can't talk about, say, what happened Saturday or Sunday daytime because he wasn't there. But you seem to know so much about that day. And what was one comment he made in the live? He was lucky. He was lucky to have gone to BJ's and bowling and everything. He was lucky. Why was he lucky? Was he not supposed to be going out that weekend? Was he on punishment or something, Chris? Why was he lucky? And I'll find that interview because, as I said, I am going through all the interviews. I am typing them all out like this for what each person says, word for word. Well, not word for your word. I'm going through this one again because I'm like, there's a lot of, um, yeah, um, um, uh, yeah, um, sort of things in it. So I'm taking all those erms and yet yeah and whatever hands because I'm not joking. It was doing my head in this um 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 stop with the erms um you know what I mean? It was, I tell you, you've got to sit and have to type these these lives out and you will know the torment that goes in your head. I literally it took me over a week. It took me nearly two weeks to do. Because at one stage, I left it for about three, four days. I didn't even touch this interview. I didn't. Right, I didn't touch it at all. I thought, no, no, I can't bear it. I'm going to turn to drink. And I can't drink. But I swear to God, after finishing this interview, I felt like getting my vodka out of the cupboard, going and getting some uh, tonic water, because I like 
fucking tonic water. But I can't drink because of the medication. <laughs> I've got another three years yet. And I still, I tell you, when I finish my medication in three years' time, right, yeah, three years in July, I've got another three years. When I finish my medication, I am going to get a nice bottle of gin or a nice bottle of vodka, slim long tonic, right? And I like the Indian slim long tonic, not slim long, Indian tonic water, because it has something in it, it that helps with the um, with your muscle, to help mus your muscles in your leg as well. It helps the muscles in your leg. Just like Chris said, it was a good thing it wasn't flash flashlight behind his house. And I hope Sebastian doesn't run away if he is being held by someone. What? He said that! He said, I hope Sebastian doesn't run away. What the hell? But I'm going to find you all this out because there's a lot of interviews I didn't have to sit and listen to it properly. So, I am going to, as I said, I'm, I record a lot of them onto my little digital recorder. Where, because it's the summer, I can then go and sit in a park somewhere, right? Still have my bearings around me, right? Sit in the kids' area, yeah? So, I know I'm not going to get attacked by anyone, right? Apart from a bunch of young babies. So, I'll probably sit in the kids' area with my laptop and just type away and people, yes because people don't understand it is autistic but why would he say and I hope Sebastian doesn't run away if he's being hound that that is weird to say. and it's like the best thing the best thing this is the best thing Sebastian ever done Disappearing without leaving a clue at all. Doing a Houdini. That's the best thing he ever done. I mean, are you for real, Chris? Are you for actual real saying things like this? So I've got to sit and listen to all those other YouTubers, the ones I'm not too keen on. I'm going to have to sit and download all their YouTube, their lives and watch their, listen to their lives. Oh my god, I can't. Do you know what channel that was on? Karen. Because if so, I can download it and I'll record it and I'll type it up. Because there's nothing better than having it written down. Because then when people say, I didn't say that, you can pull this piece of paper and say, or pull it up on the screen like I've got it. Oh, yes, you did. Here it is, word for word. And you can put those words with the video. You know what I mean? But a lot of the time, people uh, delete their videos. So it's always best to download videos. Download the video. If it's one you want to, uh, that is interesting and you need for prosperity, uh, like for the future, so that they can't come back and say, I didn't say that. Because they know it's been deleted. They could then turn around and say, I didn't say that. Oh, but you did. I've downloaded it. I've got it. Once it's on my laptop, you can't delete it. It's on my laptop. You can delete it off your laptop or anyone else's laptop. But you can't delete it off me. It's on my laptop. It's on my computer. So I've started downloading any videos of any importance. Right? So, and I will, as I said, I will be typing out every live they have done, which is a lot. I will then do some of Seth's, and I'm going to buy myself a printer as well. <laughs> so I won't just have it on my hard drive. Be in more danger if he ran away. How would it be? This, no, he wouldn't be in more danger if he ran away. You know what I mean? But why would you say that? You'd, like Seth said, if you get, if you can, 
you wrong. Just wrong. Now he said he's a good runner. He can outrun his mom. Right? And his mom's ex Navy. And he can outrun his mom. She may not be as uh, fit as she used to be, but she knows she can run still. And he can outrun his mom. But you remember when she was on that one live with WM, WSMV and they're talking about how in California he did this uh, walk or run and every lap they did he got a mark on his back of his shirt. Well I'll tell you something, that brought up a memory of my grandson. They did a walk around a football pitch of where we live and for some reason, my grandson went the opposite way to everyone else, right? Now, to be honest with you, my grandson was going clockwise. They was all going anti-clockwise. And when I noticed, I said to Chelsea, why has Ellis gone that way? Then I realised, he's going clockwise. But the rest of the group was going anti-clockwise. He was going clockwise. Right? And you know, he didn't walk. He ran. He took a little breather for about five, five seconds, then he started again. He must have done five, six or more laps of this football pitch. And it's a full-size football pitch. He's running around. So when she spoke about how Sebastian did this run around and every lap he got a mark on it, that just reminded me of my grandson. But the fact that he was doing it on his own, he was running around that pitch on his own because all the other children was following the teacher or the parent or whoever was at the front. They was following her. Not my grandson. Nope. He's not going to do what everyone else is going to do. He's going to do it his way. And he went clockwise. Where everyone else was going anti-clockwise. Uh, I think he's trying to say... Even more danger. It was, it was a person's personal injury at the beginning. At the very beginning, when he first went missing. Hmm... Because I know he did the Duchess one, then he did the WSMV one, and then he did another one. Oh, they did the one with the hands, but you didn't see their faces. That is creepy. But that's one I want to find, that one, so I can download that one, record it, and type that one up. Because not only that, I want to compare what they're saying as well against all the other interviews. Like, oh, John, you're saying that, this one, but you said it, this one, you said something different. You know what I mean? And then they did the hang one. Then I think they did the Chronicles of Olivia. Then I think they did the second one with Duchess. Second interview with Duchess. Which I'm just start, starting to type up now. But as I said, I might leave that and just record it onto my dictaphone, dicta thing. And that way I can hold it in my hand or have it right by me and just click it on and off to stop it whenever I want to stop it. If I get to, if it goes too far ahead, I can, so I can catch up. But when you're doing on off a live, when you are like on the live like this and you've got the subtitles coming up, yeah. Hmm. When you got subtitles coming up like that, it's you have to keep stopping it because they and I can't go too slow because if it goes too slow, you can't hear the it's 
You can see the words. But it's like a noise in the background. And I have to keep the sound on because I need to hear who's talking. So I can say whether it's Chris or Katie. You know what I mean? So it's very hard doing it that way. So if I go on my dictaphone thing, I can then just click pause and whatever whenever I need to. Oh, what am I doing? But as I said, this is the reason he came on this live. Because he heard someone say, I won't talk to me. Everyone has to talk to law enforcement, Chris. Everyone. Be it men or women. You have to talk to them. Right? But you won't talk to a man. I mean, you... Do you remember that interview? I think it was the very last interview she's ever done live. Oh, could you be the second one? Because I'm do I think I've only done two with Duchess. And I'm on the second one now. I'll soon find out, Pam, don't worry. I'm going to go through every one of their interviews and type them all up. And I will type it up. And I will hear. And it. I was just gobsmacked from what I was... It was like suckering me in. It was pulling me in when I was typing this interview up with Smiley. And I was getting pulled into their narrative. It might have been the one when Chris said he went off on my ranch apartment. Chris, like a ninja. Yeah, that's, isn't that the one he did with um, Cluminati? No, that would be Chronicles, wouldn't it? But, actually, I've got that one. I've actually got that one. Let's have a look, see if it's on here. Because I managed to type this one up fairly quickly because it wasn't a three-hour one. And it wasn't a lot of a, um, um, yeah, um, um, in it, you know what I mean? Because it is like one-to-one. -one. Let's have a look. Let's just see. Right, let's see. Um, there's a lot of things I've got to go through this and edit and change. You know what I mean? You can see all the red lines and blue lines coming up. So we're looking for some Chris. Where's the rest of you? I haven't got it all. I haven't finished that one. Sugar. Sugar, sugar. I'm going to have to go through that one again and finish that one. But, um... I'm doing that one now, but as I said, I'm typing that one up now, the second one that did the touches. But... Yeah. But some of the things it comes out with, it's just like, really, Chris? Really? So, I don't know why I took that off. Right. Uh, let's listen to what he's got to say. Mm, I know, they, they talk regularly. Okay, yeah, there we go. She does have a voice. All right, there yeah. we go. A lot of people have their opinions, but Sebastian's got a good bond with both dads. Yeah. I think he, I'm trying to make sure I drop it again because I want to make sure he sees it. I'm not fancy like everybody else, so I just need to make sure I get it down there. That's what I was doing was watching to see if he was coming. Oh, there he is. Smiley. Watch it over here. Okay, I'm watch it over there. Okay. Smiley, you put the links in the back chat. In the main front, you've got 
I've got comments, banners, brand and private chat, right? And you put the link in there. Or you can message them the link by onto Messenger. Like it's got invite, right? And it says copy the link and you can go to Gmail, email, messenger. Right? So I have got his messenger. Got she must be on I know she's on Facebook. And he was on Facebook at the time. I would just sent it via messenger to him. It was a good thing to you, I must admit. So, um, where do you want to start at? I was like, just ask a little simple questions or, you know, whatever about your work and stuff. Like, did you talk to Sebastian and, you know, stuff like that. But, um, um, that you hear the radio in the background. Basically. Now, why the hell is he on a live if he's at work? He shouldn't be on alive while at work. I know it's a three and a half hour drive. You was at work. Is there a reason that, um, okay, so are you working now or are you just taking off or anything like that? Like for a certain amount of time? Uh, so is this to me? Yes. Yes. No, it's just Santa okay. Claus. So are you asking me that or is one of your, your No, I just, I, I'm asking you that. I just wonder. Okay. Like if you, I, I was just wondering like if you, like are you, um, in fact, let me just, I'll turn my chat off for just a minute. So I don't get no, 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 don't, no, no, don't turn your chat off. Leave it on. It's fine. Okay. No, mean, I, oh, no. He wants to chat on so he can see what people are saying. Right? Now, I must admit, the chat can be very distracting. Right? And when you're talking, like if I'm talking, I don't have my back screen on. I have my, the main screen on, and all I see is the video that you're watching, right? And I don't always see the chat, and then all of a sudden I see some comments, like, this is why a lot of times I use my phone, and I have my phone set on the comments, so that I can see the comments coming up, so then I know to go back onto my back office path, click on comments, and pull these comments up. But I haven't got my phone with me today. It's on charge. And um, so you can get, if you're in the back office, you can get distracted with the, uh, what people are saying. If you're trying to talk, if you're in a big chat like this, is a big chat going on, right? You can get distracted with all these work questions coming up and people saying this and people saying that. So, he doesn't want it turned off, though. Listen. That way you can get all these questions coming in, because like I said, I told you, I gave you my word, I come on your show, I would answer questions. People ask the questions, but keep in mind, like I told y'all from the very beginning, I'm brash, I'm direct, but I'm respectful. Yes, you're clapping. for the same and everybody else. He's clapping. It's like, I'm brash. I'm truthful. You know what I mean? It's what I've just done there. Yeah, and I, I told them a while ago, just please be respectful because I wasn't expecting this. Like, please be respectful, y'all. Because so, so one one thing right now, I'm gonna tell you right now, really irks me with some of these folks that want to follow these YouTube. And I'm I'm very honest about this. Somebody says I won't talk to men. I, not I that I don't want to talk. Right. It's that. not that I don't want to talk to men. I have talked to more law enforcement men agencies in the past 24 days than I've probably ever talked to in my entire life. Same thing goes for women. So, no, I don't have a problem talking to a man or talking to a woman. I appreciate everybody's. You do have a problem. I'm going to fast forward. Me. He does have a problem talking to men because when Josh comes up, you see the difference in his tone and voice. Right? When he's on that, whenever he's on a live or he comes on a live, and another, there's a man who comes up, he's very, it's very brash. He's very, ooh. Uh, in your face sort of thing. He does not like talking to the men because he cannot control them. Right? So, I'm going to fast forward this bit because, not only that, what was making me so mad listening to this, uh, it was his voice. I mean, yeah. and it's Fox. 
yeah, you have to find him. And that's the most important thing. Yes. All the rest is going to fall into place later. But the most important thing is he has to be found and he has to be found regardless. Period. I want right. to just side note. He's not clapping, y'all. Yes, he was. He's not what? Um, People keep saying that he's clapping. He's not clapping. That's I'm just noise. That's what he's Oh, doing. I don't hear any. Cl- yeah. so I'm making no. a Some people have heard they're clapping and that's fine. I'm. I guess I'm currently working. Yeah, y'all. Now, no. where, where, understand, people, where I work is really nobody's business. Right? He's currently working. He's 50 foot up in the sky on one of them fucking cranes, and he's on a live. He's on a live. So he didn't stop to take a phone call for from his daughter. He had to jump off the, lo- lo- the live because he had to do something with the crane. He had to pick something up, move it over, and put it in place. That's why he jumped off the line. It wasn't a phone call. Business? I don't know about your job, I don't care. Well, when, when uh, Seth said that uh, when he came, that everything was in pristine condition except for his room. Like, I know that the Ellie was there and he said that the Ellie was there. Well, I mean, what did he mean by that? Was that just like the bed was unmade or, you know, where you looked under things or was it like, what did, what did he mean by that? Sebastian, Sebastian's room is always a little bit messy, but um, um, even more so with all the people coming in, all the law enforcement coming in and looking through things. Me, look. No, Sebastian's room isn't always a little bit messy because we know what Chris does. He says so further on in this interview. He gets a black bag, he goes in there, picks all the toys up off the floor, puts them in it, ties the bag up, and takes them, take it out to the trash can. Looking through things like everybody was searching everything. So I have, I have a question then, real quick. So yeah. you're asking that question. Is that because there's somebody's trying to insinuate that we tried to cover something up? Yes, house yes, we or... are. No, no, no. I, I mean, and, and, please understand why. I'm... Yes, we are. We're insinuating you're covering something up. Right? People wanted to know, was the bed slept in? Right? Was it not slept in or was it slept in? Because if they made a mistake by not taking his shoes... Could they have made a mistake by not making making his bed, making it look like someone has slept in it? Could they have made that mistake? But we don't know. We don't know that answer because they don't answer it. They dance around it. I'm asking that question because whether my house is dirty or clean really doesn't matter. But okay, I'm just trying to understand this. Okay, well, I'll explain it to you. It's because I have a son that is autistic. He's 28 now, but he, but I know it's all different um, types. I don't know. My grandson, right? He's been, my, my one grandson is on the spectrum and he's very, very, very neat. He likes everything in a place, right? Uh, in, like, if we go to visit him and my other two grandchildren come with us, he won't let them in his bedroom. <laughs> he don't let them in the bedroom, which is fair enough. That's his little sanctuary, you know what I mean? But my other grandson, who I have, is totally different. He can trash his bed. He'll go in, his mum can make his bed, right, while he's at school. He'll come home from school and the first thing he does He'll go to his bedroom and pull his duvet cover off his bed. He does not like the duvet cover on the bed. He does it here. I can make those bunks perfect. Right? And he'll come on a Friday and within 10 minutes of him going in that bedroom, that duvet cover is on the floor. Right? And I've said to him, don't you like the duvet cover? Do you want, like, I know he likes these, like, fleecy blankets that I've got on my bed. And I've got one over my sofa, because I just like the feel of it. And I have got it over my sofa so that if I do fall asleep on the night time, I can just pull that blanket over me. Right? And he said, yes. I said, would you like it if I brought you one of them in blue for your bed? He said, yes. So I'm going to order one of them. Well, two. One in blue and one in pink. 
Because if I buy one for him, I buy one for my granddaughter. And then what I'll do, I'll just take the duvet cover off the duvet, wash the duvet covers, uh, put the duvets into a black bag and put them, or fold them up as best as I can and put them in this cupboard in my hallway, right? For the winter. Now, if he doesn't want it back on his bed, he doesn't need to have it back on his bed. It's there. It's spare then. It's spare if anyone's gazing on it. They've got a duvet they can use. But it's totally different. He don't, he's not one for having anything in order. Perhaps as he gets older, he might, but at the moment, he's not. He'll go in and tip a box of toys all over the floor. Lots of children on the autism spectrum, but, but they like stuff in order. And so I was just wondering, um, like, I was just trying to think back, and I'm just wondering, like, um, what did Seth mean by that? Like, was it just because the bed was messed up? And then I know the cop, like, doing these cases and stuff. I know the cops. So, I mean, it's not like you have to be paranoid that I ask you that. It's just I was asking that because I was thinking back on things, not only personally, but because I was just trying to make sense of. And then when Katie said, well, it was just his rooms out of order and stuff, I'm just thinking, well, you know, some kids, I, maybe they do, you know, if they're if they're autistic. You know, I don't know. I just ask that question. When I ask yeah. questions, I just let, listen. Let me just tell you this. When I ask questions, no, I'm going to stop this because Smiley does go into a lot of um, like when she, like this bit here. I'll play just for an instant. She goes into too much detail. I think of everything, right? You don't have to necessarily look. I'm not the police, okay? And you don't have to worry about how I ask questions. It's just I also work for a retention uh, center for 11 years, and it was my job to retain people and think outside the box. And that's what I do. It's a habit. So there's right. That. So me asking that question back mm -hmm. is because you've got a lot of viewers. I'm not saying your viewers. So let's make that super clear so that viewers super clear can screw with anything. But there's not so many people clear. out there super clear with their insinuation. And because you asked that question, it would not surprise me to see a comment. Well, that's because they cleaned the house before the cops got there. Trust me. We have seen it all, heard it all. People are putting stuff out there that it. Now, why would you think that we would think that? Why would you think that you, we would think that you did a clean up job? Because to be honest with you, I hadn't thought about that at all. I haven't even gave a thought about them doing a clean up job. Right? Because I honestly just thought, right at first, I thought, well, because when I first reported on this, I had Google Maps on and I was going all around the different ways he could have left that house and gone this way or he could have gone that way. You know what I mean? And then. As in, that was like the first week that he went missing. This interview was done, I don't know, three months ago, so four weeks in. Three and a half to four months. So it's about three and a half weeks in that this interview was done. Now, that hadn't even come to my mind. Had they done a clean-up job? Hadn't even entered my mind. And I, I can assure you I'm not the only one whose mind it hadn't come into. So why would you say that? It's completely obtuse from from the truth. And it, it is ridiculous. That's yeah. why I asked that question. Yeah. Well, you can ask me anything. You right. We're going to skip again. Skip, 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 skip. I mean, from, from the word go, Nina and I both knew we probably should have never got married. But we did, you know. Um, but I mean, still to this day, I guess when things are good, I don't have a problem talking with the other two kids at all. You know, we're all gone. Let's get back a bit. That um, that again, there was a time, and this is a long. People can change, but right. again, it's been said that Katie has struck Seth, and that again, that's a long time. I wasn't there, so oh, no. Um, <laughs> And I wasn't there either for the record. So, yeah, so, so maybe Katie should answer this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. That, oh, Lord. No, that, um, that is a whole nother thing that happened back then. 
Yeah. Well, well, that's what brought me to my question. So I was just wondering if notice as she goes, oh Lord, no, that was another thing that happened back then. Right? So is she saying no she didn't? Or is she going, oh no, 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 that was just something that happened back then. Is she saying she did slap him? You know what I mean? You, you just can't get the bearings with her. Because one minute she's going, no, 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 and then she's going, that's something that happened back then. So what something happened back then? What was that something that happened back then? Right, this is why I say, listen, if you can't do what I'm doing, type it out, get a dictaphone or whatever, type it out, you'll, you'll, hit, you'll understand it more if, you go, if you're typing it out. This is how I used to revise for my exams at school. I'd literally write it word for word out, and I'd be there night after night scribbling away in these little notebooks. And that was the way it got into my head. I managed to keep the information. And and I suppose listening to their words, because when I did that course back at college, uh, where I had to actively listen, that means don't just listen to what they say. Listen, actively listen to what the words they are saying. To the words. Right? Because, like I say, yeah, but my husband and me, me aren't getting on well. Okay. Right? Now, if someone said, oh, me and my husband aren't getting on well, I say, so you, you, you've got, you and your husband aren't getting on? And this is something else I noticed in this interview, the paraphrasing. Paraphrasing. So I ask a question and he'll paraphrase it back. So like they say, about the bed. So what you're saying is, was the bed made or was the bed not made? And he paraphrases questions back. And by doing that, you get that other person, like Smiley, to open up and explain more what she's trying to say, which she did. Right? So he's actually got control of this interview. Smiley hasn't got no control at the moment because he's paraphrasing back. And because he's paraphrasing back, he's, she's having to ex explain more about what she meant by that question. If you know what I mean. I remember once I was at uh, my mother-in-law's 80th birthday, surprise birthday meal. And I was sitting opposite my, my husband's nephew. And his wife. Well, at the time it wasn't his wife, it was his girlfriend or fiance, whatever. And um, he's the sort of lad that liked to have control. Right? Control. And I thought, you know what? He's not going to get control here. So he was talking, and I, what I did, I automatically clicked into my the skills I'd learned in my counselling course. Right? And I, so he'd say something, so I'd literally paraphrase back what he just said. So then that meant he'd answer what I said back. He's actually answering his own question. Right? And this went on for about three or four or five minutes. And my husband turned around and said, will you pack it in? And his girlfriend sat over opposite and said, what's she doing? And my husband said, she's actually sort of using the skills she's learned at college to get uh, his nephew to open up and talk more. And I was. And because he's opening up and talking to me more, I was getting more information out of him. And that is what he's doing. So... So listen to it when they ask 
ask questions. You know, Sebastian stepped in. And then I had heard uh, at another place where Seth had said Sebastian would step in. And I didn't even know if he was talking about that or not because I heard about that separate, that Sebastian would step in and say, you know, don't do this to my dad or whatever. And he could be talking about something totally different. But, you know, again, I have to think and think all kinds of things in my head. So did he, did, did Sebastian have tantrums at all? And oh, still- yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He's, a, he's, he's a kid. I mean, it's, it's even when I came in the picture, I mean, his tantrums were pretty bad. Uh, I'm going to jump up a bit because there's, there is a, a way for, for these cases, the ones that I choose to do. Um, I, I really do. I'm not big. I'm not. I grew up. I was born and raised right there in Nashville. I have family right down from y'all. Um, and I have a teacher over at Beach High School. And, you know, I, it, it means a lot to me, this case right here. And it touches my heart for so many different reasons. And, um, I, you know. We had a, that happened. And the lady was like, I am so sorry. And I said, no, he's just a child. He's upset. It is what it is. I'm okay with it. That was a lie. You know, he set that back down to the dinner table and was like, see, eat your food. <laughs> no, that was a lie. Because if someone from social services or child services or whatever they call them over there had come out and said to a child, by you lying, you're going to get in trouble. You not only get that person into trouble, but you're going to get in trouble. That is literally telling that child, we don't believe you. Right? That was wrong. Right? Oh, no, I'm going to try to jump up a bit. Drives access to uh, clouds for them. They've let people go in and search their houses multiple times without needing a warrant or a subpoena or anything. They've just openly done it. So, I mean, it that's why it's so difficult right now. Yeah. Now they come out and, uh, and I know this is part of the investigation, so you may not can answer this, but they, I mean, it was public because we saw them, we saw them with our own eyes. So they come out about what, 11 times count in the backyard where they took pictures. Okay. So did they come in and check as well? The 11 times or like, uh, did they do a uh, forensics like a luminol or anything like that? No, um, no, 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 no. I, that I can answer. No, they, they haven't done that. We, we actually, Katie and I sat down at our table um, in our dining room, and that's basically where everything conducts itself. Um, we sat down with them in the, in the dining room, and I asked them flat out, I was like, what about fingerprints? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. can, can we not take fingerprints? What what can we do? Can we check this? Can we check that? And they said, no, because, and they explained why fingerprinting would not necessarily be where they would get a hit, was ridges and things like that compromise the fingerprint. Yeah. Uh, and they, he goes, you know, despite TV and the movies, you know, that stuff you see is not necessarily true. I was like, okay, well, that's cool. I just, you know, they said, reach, think of anything. Well, we were thinking and asked them, how about this? And how about that? What about this? What about that? Please stop talking through your fucking back salt. Fingerprinting, right? Now, I don't, I watch a lot of crime programs and I like, watch a lot of the true, true, FBI files, right? The true. And it shows you a case of, say, someone being murdered or being murdered and how they find or get the evidence, right? They have now got the technology to get fingerprints of uh, non porous items. And porous items. Uh, non porous is something like um, glass. Porous is, I believe, that soaks up. It's like um, wood and things like that. And they can even get a fingerprint of uh, watching one. And what was it now? It was. Um, they got a fingerprint, so they had to set it up, and this guy, when he set it up, he took a photograph of it, then he had to turn the item just a little bit more, so he could take another photograph, then a little bit more, take another photograph, and so he could get the whole print, 
put together, right? And they can now get fingerprints from anything. Super glue. They use super glue. They heat it up, put it in a tent, a tent thing over it, seal it all up, put this super glue in a heated dish, leave it, and then leave it for about half an hour after it's done its job to make sure the glue sticks to the surface like on the body. On a body. They can get fingerprints off our body. So, sorry Chris, you're talking through your backside. That. And we got shot down. <laughs> so, um, is there or is there not a couch in front of the back door? No, there is a couch in front of a door. In front of a door. A door. Okay. I was just wondering, so, um, but so can he get out the back? Okay, so he can. Go is there an there. exit out the back of the house? Yes, that's unobscured from anything. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so okay, but what I'm asking is, how how did you know that he went specifically out the front door? What made you think that? What made you think that? We presume that he left out the front door. We never we never know a hundred percent, obviously, but we presume based off of process of elimination, um, going over it with law. Are you presumed? I don't know why he went out that door. That is not a, a presumption. That is, I don't know why. The presumption is... Oh, that's my phone. Hold on. Hold on. So all right, that was my phone, it was in my bedroom, I could hear this bleeping noise, telling my alarm's going off for my medication, my tablet. But, a presumption is, I think he went out the front door. That's a presumption. But not, I, not when, when you say, I don't know why, that is like saying, I don't know why he went out that door. Why that door? Why not? I don't know why he went out the back door. I don't know why he went out, went out the garage door. Why that door? It's not a presumption. Why? It's not a presumption. Um, enforcement, going over the house, where things are, how things are, Sebastian's routine, um, and the fact that that's the door that he always uses or prefers to use, because I won't say 100% of the time he does come in with me through another door. But um, that's the door Sebastian prominently uses. That's the one that he, if he were going to sneak out of the house or leave the house for whatever reason, that's the most reasonable door that he would have left out of. Um, any of the others would have made... Oh, you know. You know. All right, sorry. Uh, I'll find it again. I can hear him, yeah. Okay, go ahead. I can hear you now. Go ahead. I'll go. I'll go. Oh. I mean, the reach that we have gotten put out there, we've gotten a company that will have uh, it. Right. Uh, I'll find it again. Don't worry. But. Well, I've just come to the part where I've just where Josh is just about to come into this interview, and you'll see the difference. He actually jumps off in a minute. He actually jumps off, and then it's like he knew Chris was uh, Josh was going to come up, and he had to get get himself prepared for it. Right? It's just so funny that he seemed to drop off as Josh came up. And um, it's, oh, let's just listen. Not just yet. In Spanish and in French, oh, that the flyers are mm -hmm. being pushed all the way up into Canada. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, we're, we've got, 
we're, we're reaching out. We've got great family and friends and blessed people out there. Like I said, it, there's, if we never meet you and I'm sorry, I, I wish we could. I wish we could shake everybody's. Oh, you got good family and friends. We know you have. Right? They're the ones going around following people. They're the ones going around intimidating people, harassing people. We know you got good friends. Okay. Fact, Sebastian here. I'll just, like I said, I got nothing to hide. So Sebastian went to school one day because he, we were at the house. He got in trouble. He didn't have a belt on. I was like, where's the belt? And he got it. Whack. Kind of got him. So he goes to school and he tells the teacher. They're mandatory reporters. So the teacher reports it. Now, that was one of the part I weren't sure what he said. Right? When he said, he asked Sebastian, where's the belt? And Sebastian said, I haven't got it. Did he say whack like he whacked him with his belt? Because I'm not sure what he meant there. Um, but either way, he hit him with a belt. And he's trying to make out that that isn't what the uh, child services come for. He's trying to make out that child services come for because he lied. He lied. Right? So. Let's continue because I'm, I'm going to try and get it up where Josh is. Right, this is where he's come I up. know if there's one floating around out there anywhere. His father has one on him. Okay, that's good enough. Um, now, oh, Chris just dropped off again. Let me see if I can put this back in here. Sorry. And he may be back too. <laughs> Let's see. Paste. I'm sorry. I have to do no, it. For clarification, no, I did not allow him to beat my son with a belt. He did not beat my son with a belt. Yes, he did. Because he actually says so further on in this interview. That he whacked him with, over his clothing with the belt. I don't care if he had five layers of clothing on and padding on. He hit him with a belt. And you let him, you let him do that to your son. Right? Now, he, he said he whacked him over his clothing. Right? I don't know how many people are being hit by, I don't know, some like, um, like, you imagine, have you ever done that where you've, got your tea towel, right, and you flipped it at someone, at the leg, it flipping hurts, and that's with clothing on, can you imagine what a belt would do, this is a 15 year old lad you are using a belt on, and this is why I will not, if I had the biggest platform going, have that piece of SHIT, on my channel. Right? This is why I will not ever, ever have him on a channel. I could be the biggest YouTuber out there going and I will not have him on my channel because of that. Is a CI. Um. Okay. Uh, Josh wants to call in real fast. Let's see. Hold on a minute. Okay. Hold on. Let's go. Oh, uh, maybe that he didn't say anything. Oh, I'm going back. Just a little bit. Um, oh, what what kind of stuff?
Maybe yeah. Honest. Wait a minute. You asked me because I'll read the messages to everybody in God's country. You asked me if there was an active CPS case on Sebastian. That's what you asked. And I told you, yes, there was because the sheriff's department told us that they had to report it because he was missing. That's what you asked. Now, you also started to ask if there was another case and there was no other case that I know of that's active. That's what you asked. What about the case in January where you had to move out of the house, Chris, and that's why you was not in the home in February? Yeah, I'm here. So, like I said, sir, I'm brash. I'm to the point. Be respectful. Can you hear and me? I will tell you, and I'll be honest, and I'm going to tell you the truth. I got nothing to hide. Can, did, you, did you hear what I said? Yeah, he said, okay. Can you hear him, Josh? I can hear him, yeah. Okay, go ahead. I can hear you now. Go ahead. Exactly. If he beat Sebastian with about why did he have to be specific about where and how? Exactly. Come on, Bobby. You're not in trouble. Oh, yeah, he's really going to come home to you and Chris and Kate, isn't he? Nina's case as well. I'm going to type that out, but I want to get that on my like, my little recorder so that I can, as I said, it's the nice weather's coming. I don't have a, I don't live in a house. I live in a flat or apartment, as they call them in the, U, in the USA. Right? And it's a big, big place. Two bedrooms, two big bedrooms, big living room. You know what I mean? It's big compared to some places you can get in. Right? And, um, but it's just, I need to start going out more. I don't go out. I don't go out if I can help it. Because I don't, I think people just irritate me. And I just want to smack them one. Right, so when I'm with my grandchildren, with my grandkids, I'm fine because they distract me, right? But when I'm on my own, it's like, oh, serve them or move out my way or, you know what I mean? I do not like it. I, I, hate, going, I hate going out. So I thought if I get this and I record some of these interviews, there's a, there's a little place just across from me. And they, it's like, um, a, a, they call it a food bank, where you can pay a two pound, four pound or six pound. And you can get so many, so many articles of items of food. And you can come out with about two or three bags just paying four pounds, uh, two pound, right? Two or three pounds, you know what I mean? You can have quite a few bags of shopping. But then I've got a section where you can go and just sit and have a coffee and a chat. Right? So, and outside there, they've tidied up this area and they painted all this other area opposite the shop where you can sit now. They've, they had benches before, but it looked ugly. It was horrible. No one wanted to sit there. So they cleaned it all up, painted it all up, put some more fencing around it, around the wall. So you've got some privacy as well. Yeah? And you can go and sit there. So I thought, I can sit there with my laptop and just with my one earpiece in. I only ever have one earpiece in. So then I can also hear what's going on around me if need be. And to do some typing there. Rather than sitting in my flat where it's hot and sweaty and horrible. If it was an accident, you call an ambulance, take him to a hospital, or you take him yourself. Yep. Yep. Here's Josh, anyway. Well, I just said, well, in the messages that I asked that it was pertaining to Sebastian's uh, school, right? Like you just said. And you said, no, other than him going missing, no CPS cases. I don't know. I don't, I can't hear. Uh, maybe that. He didn't say anything. Can you hear him, Chris? Can you hear Hello? him? Yeah, okay. I can now. I can now. Okay. Sorry. 
So you didn't ask, you asked about active cases. That's what you asked about. And I answered your question. You did. You answered my question. Hello. 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 Nurse Savvy, he said you answered his question. I can hear you. Can you hear him, Josh? Okay. Yeah, I can't hear him. <laughs> okay. Can y'all so, hear I think so he's, he, he's actually, he's asked me, and I can't pull it up because if I pull it up, then we lose contact. But he asked me if there was active DCH, CPS, whatever you want to call it, case with Sebastian. Hold on. You're on your mobile phone, right? But you can't, I can be on a video call and I say, oh, I've just sent you a photo and I'll go into my photos. Uh, I've got... Whatever. Or I can be on a phone call, sorry. And I said, we just sent you a photo. So I'll go into my messenger and I'll click. I'll go, oh, yeah, that's a lovely photo. You know what I mean? You're telling me he could not. He's on a live, but he could not pull up his messages on his phone. B.S. Again. And I said, yes, he's missing. I was told by the sheriff's department that they had to report it. So yes, there's an active case. Is there anything other than that? No, there's not an okay. active case. So my my statement that I told you is true. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I, I get it, the active investigation or, or but yeah, you, you, but you did really, maybe it's just because of text, but you did make it seem like there was there was no, like that, that this was the first time that, that they'd ever been involved at all. No, I, I didn't insinuate. Now, understand something. Words on paper are simply words on paper. Whatever right, emotions right. you put behind them is directly a, a proportionate to yourself, not me. Oh, sir, I didn't, I didn't put any emotion behind it. I'm just well, saying. what you're saying, you're trying to insinuate on this show. No, no. Yes, you did, sir. Yes, because not, you just I'm, stated, you I'm just stated, you just stated that you yeah. said that I made it sound like this. No, I didn't. I told you. I gave you a direct statement, gave you your answer, and that, that right there is the, what exactly what I'm talking about. Then you called into the show and you said, no, you're lying. No, I'm not lying. So. Chris, when you call out certain YouTubers, you need to remember who you're talking to. Because these YouTubers will actually put it out on their live, the messages that you sent. And the messages he sent. Right? He'll put them out on their live. If he so, if he wanted to, but he won't, because that isn't Josh. Hold on, hold on, my cat's into something. Thank you, God, you. God, these cats are worse than children, I swear to God, they are. Can I have eyes in the back of your head? Call a spade a spade, but make sure you're right. Now, to be honest with you, it has nothing to do with finding my son. You don't so, think that, the, you don't think, okay, all right. Well, look, man. How does DC, how does CPS have to do with anything finding Sebastian? Because if if you're insinuating something, Well, you said they opened up an investigation. It. You said they opened up an investigation. Investigation. So you tell me what it has to do with him. Because what did I tell you? That's what you're not listening. The sheriff's department told us that they are required to report it to DCS, CPS, whatever you want to call them. They are required to report it to them. Mm -hmm. That answer has yet to change. It hasn't changed any of the slightest. And, and okay, so that's the okay. I get it. So it's the only Thank open you. investigation. Thank you. You're welcome. It's not the only open one. I can guarantee you, it's not. He had one from January, right? That's why he moved out the house and was living in the five-wheeler. That's why he never come home on the weekends. Because we, no one could understand why he never come home on the weekends. Okay, there's some weekends he might be working. But if you've not seen your wife all week, right? Would you work all weekend? Even if I had just a Sunday off, I would finish work on the Saturday, get in my car, drive up home for the three hours, spend the Saturday night in my own bed, 
Even the Sunday night even, I leave early Sunday morning and Monday morning to go to work. He could have left at what? We know for a fact they don't start work till about seven-ish. Because BHB was there, right? She was there and she was there at quarter past five and there was people in the down part of the building doing like the inner of the inside of the down floor working in there but the crowds weren't working at quarter past five and then as the morning went on more people was coming in to work and the crowds start they clock in between half six seven o'clock so i'm sorry you're just full of it What's the next article we got? Far away. Okay. I'm not arguing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I was just wondering, like, if him, like, Katie, let me ask you this, or anybody, anybody can answer. So, like, if if y'all were at home alone, like, because Chris works out of town a lot, um, and this is, I just wonder, like, would would Sebastian know what to do if there was a house fire? Like, if oh, I'm gonna skip this bit. It's just about would you know what to do if there was a house fire? This. Is what go, I must admit that gets me when the men talk about the house fire and how he knows how to go and get help, go to the uh, neighbor. You can trust what neighbor can't you trust? Right? Uh, and I thought, well, if he rang out that house in fear, yeah, if he rang out that house on this. Monday morning, early hours, Sunday night, early hours, Monday morning, in fear. Why didn't you run to a neighbour's house? Because it would have been caught on their door cams. Everything would have been seen on a door cam. And I think it's highly rude of the proud folks to have that nice home and depend on their neighbours' houses with their security and their cameras to depend on their neighbours to watch their house. You know what I mean? If I was a neighbour and every neighbour around me had ring doorbells or home security camera, right, but my neighbour opposite didn't have nothing, I'd be going, and they said, God, it's all right because we don't need it because your ring doorbell will catch anything on our door. Now, he says himself in this interview, I can't find it now, right, that if someone had came into their house to take Sebastian, the, you would have, it would have been seen, a shadow would have been seen on the ring doorbell across the road of that person coming in. So why is there no shadow of Sebastian who apparently went out that door? Going out that door. Why is there no video of him leaving the house? Because he didn't leave the house. Not on his own will. Well, I was actually still wearing my work clothes. <laughs> right. Let's go a bit further, because, because I'll give I you, was I'll hysterical give you. and screaming and crying and frantic, and so he told me to mute my phone, and he's the one that actually called, because at that point, I couldn't even make words anymore. So, not only that, but if uh, folks know the area, when you call 911, you go to a central dispatching unit. You don't actually go to your local PD unit. You go yeah. I I feel bad for Nina. Um, excuse me, Chrissy Poo. Don't lie again, because I have got a picture somewhere now. I'd have to find it, but I can pull it up next time I do a live on Sebastian. Of the times that 
So my time to share this office is open. And they are not open at 20 past or half past six. So when you phoned that number, that number will automatically send you to the dispatch. Because the office isn't open. It will automatically send you to dispatch. And that's that dispatch call we heard. And they said that call came through at 6.35 or something like that. Not 6.20. 6.30 something. 33, 35, something like that. Not 6.20 in the morning. So, I know you didn't like the fact that that dispatch call got released. I know we didn't. Because it was in an interview. And the way he answered about that dispatch call, he wasn't happy. He was... Because when I heard, I can't remember what interview, but as I said, I'm going through all the interviews and I will find it again. And as I said, I'm going to start, I'll highlight, I have started to highlight the one of this one, certain points of it, right? And uh, it's just the fact that he did not like the fact. Because he said, I don't know who leaked, leaked the dispatch call. It wasn't leaked, it was released. Right? It was released. It's public, from what I understand, it's public information over there. I don't know why it is over here. I don't know if we'd be able to get the 911 phone calls over here because our police are very, very, very tight lipped. They won't tell you feck all. That's why I don't cover a lot of cases in the UK because unless it hits the news, big time news, we don't hear about it. And there's so many cases we don't hear about involving young children. Sometimes we don't hear about it until it's gone to court. That's how tight or I'm gone. I just have to turn my back in. We don't hear about anything like this until it's gone to court sometimes. No, because the office isn't open. It doesn't open till I think, I think they said 8 a.m. 8 a.m. till 4.30, 5 p.m. So any calls that come through to that office before then, they will get automatically redirected to dispatch. Automatically. If you phone after 8 a.m., then you'll get the sheriff's office. But before 8 a.m., all calls will get redirected to dispatch. Go to a hub on a cell phone. When you tell them where you're at, then they redirect you to the local PD. We don't live inside city limits, so the local PD is they're not responding. It's not their jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So we have to call the sheriff's office. So I called directly to the sheriff's office because it, I know what was going to happen. Bypass it, call them. And within 10 minutes of that phone call, they were at the house. And when they were at the house, they were at the house in full force. How many came? Do y'all remember? Was it a lot? Uh, or... You've seen you've seen the aerial shot of the subdivision, correct? Yes. Okay, so from our house, go all the way down, back down to Stafford to that stop sign where Kellen and Stafford meet. Then line cop cars all the way down Kellen out to Long Hollow Road. Yeah. That's how many cops came. <laughs> well, uh, is there is there a reason like y'all didn't go? Oh, it's so funny, isn't it, Chris? That all these police come out. All these police come out to look for your stepson, to look for your son, Katie. It's so flipping funny, isn't it? Go to the vigil. I mean, for real, the one by the high school, seriously? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Why? So, 
security reasons. And here's so reasons. this is what I'm fixing today. He's going to spark a whole bunch of stuff in the comments. I'm not afraid to answer any of this. The young lady who started to organize this vigil never even contacted us. Not one time has any of these vigils taken place that somebody tried to organize them with us as the parents. I think the only one that's been. No, I'll tell you what you didn't like, Chris. I'll tell you what you didn't like, Chris. You didn't like it because you did not have control. Right? You did know about that first vigil because they said you sent family up. Family members went up. So you knew about that very first vigil that your neighbourhood set up. And the fact that you didn't want it outside your house, they wasn't even planning on having it outside your house. They could have planned it anywhere. They could have planned it up by, you know, that neighbour did the talk. They could have planned it up by that road bit there. There wasn't thousands that turned out. The first vigil was set up for the neighbourhood only. Yes, word got out, but not thousands. I suppose thousands would have loved to have come, but not thousands did. And you did know about it because they said, you said, there was family members that come up and said, oh, I'm such and such, I'm the aunt or I'm the whatever. So you knew about it. Somewhat organised with a parent is the one that was done in Clarksville with Seth. Other than that, the one that was down supposed to be out in front of my house was a security issue. My neighborhood said, we don't want it here because our roads don't have sidewalks. We don't have easements. Taking your name. Pardon me. Your neighborhood didn't want it there. Your neighborhood was the one. Pardon me. I'm just eating some crisps. Your neighborhood was the one who set that very first vigil up. Your neighborhood was the ones who was setting it up. They were setting it up just for the neighborhood so that you wouldn't feel overwhelmed. Right? That was it. And you didn't even go to that. And I know why you didn't go. Because you don't, and he says so here, in this, he don't believe in vigils. The vigils are for those who have died. Supposed to park on the street. Yeah. We found out about it, and then we found out that they were spreading it all over, basically the county and state. And there was like tons and tons of people saying they were going to come. And um, there, there's there's zero parking here. There's it's not big gathering right. spot. So we asked for them to move it to the school, which is literally like half a mile from my house, if that. It's not, it's not like and that. It's like and can mile. accommodate can accommodate all of the people. Not yeah. only that, but some of the people, like some of the comments and the stuff that's being said, is not even worth. And, I know I'm not our shoes, it, it could be a, it, should, it could be a security reasons because if somebody shows up acting crazy, you know that that's that's not kosher. One, it's not coming in our subdivision. I don't want it in front of my house. I don't need thousands of people in front of my house. You know, thousands, I thousands. Come on, Chris. Come on. You're still talking, but I can't hear you. I could say you're talking if you get if you moved. All right, we'll listen for <laughs> him. Uh, let's see. Um, Katie, was you um, still married to Seth when you and Chris met? No. So um, I know he's insinuating that I cheated, and I did not. Um, Seth and I had been separated for. I think about two years and change when I met Christopher. Yeah. And we didn't get married until nearly three years after my divorce. So, no, I was not cheating and running around. Um, you know that it's been said <laughs> that there are rumors, and Chris is not up here now, but it's been said that... Um, you notice how when Kay answers a question, she answers the question. 
She don't dilly dally dance around it. She doesn't give you a two minute talk about something that wasn't even asked. Now this is about the guy she's supposed to have had an affair with. She didn't have no affair. Come on. Had issues going back and forth with it basically his whole life. Right. Um, uh, okay. So why is there a problem? I feel, um, I mean, I feel it shouldn't be a problem, but somebody's asking about the GoFundMe. Why are you so mad about that, Chris? So initially, I forgot what day it was. Myself, Katie, and Seth were in my house, and I brought up the question. I said, hey, is, you know, should we start a GoFundMe page to start trying to raise money to add help to this however we can? And the police said, hey, no, I don't recommend doing that because then if you do that, it looks like you're trying to do this for profit. I was like, okay, that makes sense. So we all three had an agreement. We weren't doing this. And next thing you know, now there's a GoFundMe page up there. So, okay. And, um, but, okay. So why don't y'all just start your own GoFundMe page? I mean, it's like, there's no sense in arguing over it, really. I mean. It, well, and it, so all of this is kind of stemmed because you got a family member who wants to go out there and blast some family matters to the public. That's where it all stems from. Like I said, this is not family problems. This isn't about family matters being public. It's about Sebastian. Right. And we've got some. Hold on. Hold on. She just asked, why didn't he stay set up their own? Go for me. And he goes on then to say, well, this all stemmed from a family member blasting or family in private information out. No, they didn't. What the grandmother said is, Seth, uh, Chris, you, Katie, you need to tell us where Sebastian is. Because believe me, I've got information that Seth, uh, Sebastian told me. She didn't tell us what he told her. We could have a good guess at what he told her. Right? But that had nothing to do with the GoFundMe. Nothing. You didn't want the GoFundMe because apparently you'd all agreed there would be no GoFundMe. Fair enough. But Seth didn't set it up. Seth wouldn't know how to set it up. Seth didn't have Facebook. He didn't have anything like that. He had YouTube from 2016 or 2017, which he used for his music or for certain videos and films or things like that. I use YouTube on my TV all day long. But then I go to bed and I watch Netflix. Because <laughs> I can get all my... Drama. If I want to watch drama programs, I'll go on YouTube, uh, Netflix. Well, if I want to watch True Crime, and I mean True Crime, how they, it actually works, how they get the information they need, then I'll watch YouTube. Right? Some yards are going to sleep listening, because I'm lying on the sofa some yards, and I think, why am I lying on the sofa listening to this YouTuber when I know I'm going to fall asleep? Right? So I might as well just go and get into my bed, listen to it on my TV in my bedroom, and know that if I fall asleep, I'm in bed. So that's what I do now. So, but, but BS, this is family members BS all through this. that aren't necessarily kosher about everything right now i'm sorry i'm putting you all through this again i'm really really sorry but i think you need to listen to the words as i'm saying as i'm telling you because it's the words that count it's not so much this is why i like youtube's like this where you don't see the body where you just hear the words because then it makes you have to focus on the words i use and they're upset their emotions are i got it everybody's been at one point hot-headed you know, in, in some, if somebody tells me they're not, that's a lie. Everybody's been a hothead at some point. I haven't. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we got a missing kid. I think it's crazy. I'm not hot. Well, 
in my opinion, I mean, you have to put everything aside. I mean, your feelings, her feelings, and I know it's not easy. You've got, you know, you, you honestly have to do this. You're going to have to endure a lot. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's not it's not going to be pretty and it's probably going to be worse i just sat here with another case two and a half years of going going on three years in june see how he and by how he answered that question he's literally got smiley to open up and explain more so she goes now into another case that she's been looking into you know what i mean this is why people, someone said to me, why, why don't, like, why don't you go speak to someone? Like, after I had this, like, after I had, was told what, about my illness I had, and after my treatment and everything. Someone said, why don't you go and speak to someone, arrange to speak to someone? I said, it wouldn't work. It would not work. Because I know how they think. I know how they work. And I would just literally zip it. Right? But then they can go on your body action. They can go. If I just sat there and said nothing, and I've got my arms folded, because I don't want to give anything away, right? When you do counselling, you also watch their body behaviours. Right? And... You're not a body, ex body behavior expert. You just watch how their body is. And so if they sit there very quietly, you can say, uh, what was it now? They're sitting, you're sitting there very quietly. You can say, is there, nothing you wanna, is there anything you want to talk about? And you can just sit there and stare them in the eye. You seem very quiet. Oh, you seem a bit hostile. So, say you got a face, so, yeah, bring it on, girl, bring it on, sort of face. And you're sitting there and you've got your legs crossed and your arms folded. Your arms is your barrier. That's your space. No one is coming past into that space. Right? But as soon as you put your arms down, you're putting your barrier down. So, having your arms folded is like, you're not coming in my space, and they, you can pick up on things. So you can say something like, you seem a little bit like you don't want to be here. And then you say, no, I don't effing want to be here. Why don't you want to be here? Because, and, and, you know what I mean? And they pick up on what you say, and they paraphrase it back to you, so then you start... They just need you to open up your mouth once, once. And from that, they will get a conversation going with you, just once. Right? So they will get you to open your mouth, however they see. Just by sitting there with your eyes folded in your face going, yeah, I really, you know that look you can have on your face and you think, I really don't want to be here. And you're looking at them going, that is a look. And if they can pick up on that look, they'll go, I'll just get the feeling you don't want to be here. And you'll go, well, no, I don't want to be here. Boom. They've got you. Boom. Why don't you want to be here? What? What is it about being here you don't like? And then you say, I don't want to talk to you. Why don't you want to talk to us? But you are talking to them because, you know what I mean? And without realising it, you are talking to them. And, and the thing to see now that has not been pretty. And no results have been, unfortunately, found. And, um, but I, I'm hoping that it will be different with Sebastian. I know that the people there care. There's no doubt in my mind. And one reason that there's no doubt is again that's where i was born and raised and i have family there and i know and there's good people there there are good people there and, and Chris, I you know I, I see the difference i really do and you know sometimes this internet is harsh
But one thing that I see different with the police there is they do come out and they say, we, we do want your help. We do want, you know, and they're in, and they're asking and they're begging and they're doing everything they can to find Sebastian. Oh, well, 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 uh, Smiley, I must have missed this bitch of your, in, of your life. Where have the police come out and asked us, anyone for their help? In fact, the only thing they have said is we want everyone to stay at home and to check their own properties. They're not asking for them to come out on searches. They're not. They wanted everyone to stay at home and just check their properties. And if they couldn't do it themselves, to get in touch with them and they would send someone, some a group out to do it. That is the only thing that I was asking. They wasn't asking for people to come out on searches like they have been with Elijah Vu. Right? They, the public it, where Elijah Vu went miss, has gone missing, the family got together and they got it all organised properly with maps and they got teams of people going out in teams in certain areas. Right? That is what they did not do. Even when they scaled the search back. Right? And they scaled it back because they were looking for Riley Strain. FBI and TBI and all that lot had to be down looking for Riley Strain. That's why they scaled it back. So why didn't they say, okay, we still want these searches to go on. Uh, if you want to help, please come to this location at this time where we will put you in teams and we'll have a designated person, qualified person to be in that group, one or two people, qualified people to be in this group with you to go and search certain areas. Why didn't they do that? Because they haven't asked for help. They haven't. Trying to put him first. You know, it's not hard when you have others that have come up missing during this um, search for Sebastian. Um, you know, because everybody deserves a fair shot, you know. Right. See, she mentions Riley Strain there. And that's why they scaled back the search. I want to be a bio. Yeah. Stay still. Yeah. Dead. Well, I, don't I, know. Thought I would, no, okay. Uh, that's news to me, but no. Um, it could be uh, they're paying. They paid to ask that question, which I'm just now getting to, and they yeah. ask. They're gonna talk about right. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is where. Okay. I had to read some of these because once they're gone, I am not gonna see them for a while. Oh, okay. in here. That's why I apologize. Uh, is it hurtful to be? No, because it's hurtful to be a bio. Say step. Oh, that's when we first come on here and I was asking you that. Okay, did he take any medicine before bed and did he sleepwalk? Yeah, yeah I don't did he sleepwalk? Yeah, I don't I as long as I've been in Sebastian's life, he I've never heard of him sleepwalk. Now getting up in the middle of the night and sneaking snacks and stuff, that's one thing. But sleepwalking. And to clarify, not. he's not sneaking food because we starve him, because that's absolutely not the case. He just likes to munch on a bunch of junk food in the middle of the night because he doesn't get a bunch of sugar he's you know one dessert and he wants to eat the whole box so he gets up in the middle of the night and sneaks snacks mm -hmm. yeah he's standing in his room and hides right so it's not coming into the kitchen during the night to because you're not feeding him it's coming in because he wants to okay but he wouldn't do it if he wasn't hungry the wrappers under his bed I mean, it same stuff basic kids do. It's just one. I'm not going to have bugs throughout the house. We told him you eat in the kitchen, you eat in the dining. Oh, shut up, Chris. My grandson comes to mine, right? And the first thing we do when we get here on a Friday is he has a snack because when he comes home from school, because I'm normally pick him up and come home, give him straight from school on the Friday. He likes to have a snack. And now I used to give him a sandwich, but then I thought he's not eating his eating, he's not eating his main meal. 
Pode sonhar. I give him. If I've got a yogurt, you can have a yogurt. I normally have some yogurt too. He can have a yogurt or he can have... Oh, I don't know. Anything. And nine times out of ten, he'll have a packet of crisps. And nine times out of ten, that packet... Well, half of that packet will end up on my bedroom floor. I have to go back up. Because otherwise, I go to bed and it's like crunch, crunch, crunch on the floor. I'm going to bed. I'm going, at least you dropped your crisps on the floor again, you little fecker. You know what I mean? And, um, but otherwise, it, it's just a matter of cleaning up. Get the vacuum out. Pick the wrappers up. Come on, man. Is he not taught how to clean? In the room. Very you right done with it, you put it in the trash. That's the only thing we've asked him. <laughs> okay, so they're back to Rachel. So they're saying that what happened to her head, that's what they want to know. And to that's what they're yeah, I don't know what they're talking about. Now, Rachel is one of his ex-wives. Right? Now, he said that his when they got married, she then got a good job in oh, somewhere. So she was down there working while he was up wherever. And while she was down there working, it like the long distance marriage was not working and she started like sidestepping with someone else. So he said, not having this. We call it quits. So they called it quits. And that's how it ended, so he says. And that apparently his mother still talks to her to this day. Um, if they could clarify a little bit more, I don't I don't know. They're saying you almost killed her. I don't know. Huh? Like I said, I don't know anything about Rachel. Okay. Um it's posted on the board. Uh, yeah, if I can't see the comments for some reason. Okay, it says comments, you got killed, Rachel. There was blood everywhere. Where, sir, you thought she was dead? I don't well, know. I where thought I would, no, okay. Uh, that's news to me, but... You know what? I'm going to do a bit of digging on this Rachel and see what's, what is to be said about this Rachel. No. Um... It could be. Uh, they're paying, they paid to ask that question, which I'm just now getting to, and they've asked it two or three times. That's why... Uh, I just can't. I don't know. It could be a troll. I don't know. I listen. I have no idea. I don't mean to make y'all. No, 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 no. I'm not. I just. I'm sitting. I'm like interested. Like her head, blood everywhere. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a new one on me. So I'll call it. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't really know what's going on there. But again, my, my, my mother actually still talks to Rachel. I mean, that that right there ought to tell you the kind of relationship that. My family had with her. We we still talk to her. Yeah, she's got her two kids. So, yeah, you probably phoned her up and said, "Don't say anything. If anyone contacts you, you don't talk." That's what you mean by you still talk to them. You phoned them up and told all your exes not to open their mouths. But you know what? Nina did. Where that all that stuff's coming from is very interesting. I but no. <laughs> well, there y'all have it, folks. Sometimes. Sometimes families do still talk to exes and their moms and dads and all that does. So I don't know. Um, did L.E. check vehicles or and your trailer that they, that you took to Memphis? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So yes. they're saying yes. All right, let's see. Um, oh, thank you for coming, a YouTube member. Beautiful sunflower. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the medicine that Sebastian, is that life-threatening if he don't take that medicine? No. No. Okay. Sense. But not so much where he was, but like, if you just play it back in your head, like, if you think, what in the world happened? I mean, what could have happened? Is there things like maybe that you've thought over and over as a mother? Smiley, you're giving her the answers to give to you. Or what could have happened? Something ring a bell from a week ago, a month ago, something that's clicked to you. I mean, anything. I, I mean, all I can say is everything that I've come up with, um, I've, I've 
asked law enforcement to look into and so far nothing has led to anything substantial in finding him i mean we've we've gone over wild probabilities you know hey, we got a life stuff. light burning bell. and um yeah, I'm looking at that right now. They never said nothing about it on the radio. We. Did you hear that? That was him on his walkie-talkie. Talking to them on the ground. Right? Now, what they have, as I said before, is he doing a live. I know he's just sitting up in the cab, probably not doing nothing. Right? But he shouldn't be on alive. Sorry. Don't agree with this. I haven't been able to figure out anything that explains where my son is. Yeah. And they want to know, do you know this Katie Fish or, or Carol? This is the part where when I come back after hitting my head on the cupboard door. This was this was the section I was getting sucked into their their story, Katie's story. You know what I mean? And this was where I started to feel sorry for her. So later on, I got up and I went back out in the kitchen. No, I was in the kitchen or the bedroom somewhere. And I hit my head against the wall purposely. Ooh, not hard, just hard enough to knock some sense back into my head. So Angie, what are you thinking? You know what I mean? Because this was where she was getting me sucked into it. Carrie Fisher, uh, personally, the one that um, redirected the search. Was no. convict you know who I'm talking about. She was a convicted felon. Yes, I heard I about that, but no, I've never met her before. How do you feel about her at all? How do you feel about that? Um, we talked to um, the law enforcement about it to ask because um, we didn't know anything about it until we started getting told that there was you know, an issue and so, and somebody who fell in was potentially interrupting the searches and whatnot. And we went to them and, and was like, what the heck? Like, what is this? You know, what are y'all doing with it? You know, is this true? And um, I don't know all of the results on if, if law enforcement like directly addressed her or anything like that. I just know that um, um, that she led a search, I believe, down in Goodlitzville. Yeah. And at the end of the day, at least it was a search that happened. <clears throat> so you don't think she hurt hurt anything or like as far as the searches or anything, do you? Do you think it was just something that blew up on on um the internet? I mean I mean I know they got her out, she's not allowed to search anymore, but I mean, do you think it was something that just blew out of proportion? I I I, I mean it's nothing more than an opinion, but I think probably because yeah. law enforcement said that um that there was no like hindrance that they know of that happened from that, but it's beyond the whole internet blow up yeah yeah okay that was just a question that was on here too and um okay so they want to know so somebody uh, always l8 wants to know why sebastian was wearing pull-ups at your home and uh, i think we covered that and not uh, oh no they want to know if he was afraid of chris is that why he was wearing the pull-ups no he wasn't wearing pull-ups because he was afraid of chris sebastian yeah. had a recent autism diagnosis but sebastian has no. the question was why was Sebastian wearing pull-ups at your home? And Katie, are you afraid of Chris? Chromosome deletion that he was diagnosed with when he was a baby. Yeah. All right, let's go a bit further. God. She would love to have it. Here he goes. Okay. I think it would be great because she's got such a, vast audience and a way of getting it out there big time absolutely absolutely but oh that was you know when uh, nancy grace did that first interview and she did it with seth and people were saying why didn't why wasn't katie and chris there well they said they wasn't told about that interview that's a lie because they was told about it because Nancy Grace only wanted the bio parents, which was Seth and Katie. She didn't want Chris. He's the stepfather. Plus, 
Katie was the last one in the house with him. And because Chris wasn't invited to this interview, they said they didn't turn up. They just didn't show up for him. And they made out they wasn't informed. Yes, they was. Excuses again. But Chris, I was just going to say, what's the difference in that being on a, 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 any channel that maybe is just trying to make a name for to their self? Is that not like, is that not, who's not really in, who's not really does stuff like this? I mean, I'm just asking. I mean, is that not important to y'all? Find, finding Sebastian is every bit of important as anything else. But at the same time, do I want to sit down with somebody who's drugged me through the mud, continues to drag us through the mud, and keeps putting false information out there, which causes a lot of problems, not just for us, but for the law enforcement folks that are also doing their job trying to find Sebastian. It's Fucking cock. It's well, can I add, can I just ask you, just, um, what about Nick Barris? I mean, he, that's who we're referring to. Okay, okay. Um, I they don't like Nick Barris because Nick Barris put that. I must admit, Nick Barris was wrong in doing releasing that video. I must admit, he was wrong because he didn't get it verified. Right, he didn't go to the owner. Of whose camera it came from, whose home security it came from, because the home owner was not happy that that video got released, right? Because that video was showing more than what it than what Nick Barris showed. Yeah, Nick Barris just showed two little lights, right? But when you see the whole video. You see the cars in front of the house in the driveway, and then you see another car, uh, an outline of a car, because you see the lights come on, and then you see the two little lights. So we shouldn't have put it out there without getting it verified first. But now, what did I say? Because um, he's now some of the county's sheriff's office little puppy, because he's the one who they tell all the info to, and he's the one who gets it released. I don't know anything about that, so I'm just going to say, okay. okay. Right, and unfortunately, and it, it's nothing against everybody out there, there's there's stuff that people don't know, and they're not going to be, not, they won't know because they weren't pervy. Per oh, so I could give it a beep, 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 beep. I thought it's up somewhere in my flat. It is isn't. Sorry. Yeah. You yeah. know, not only that, but, you know, the, it's, it just sucks. And I, you know, there's yeah. a difference in journalism and trying to get your Emmy nomination. There's a difference. Yeah. Well, I like to meet you. Yeah. Eat for, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm not, and like I said, I'm not trying to be mean, but. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to figure this out. So, yeah. I mean, trust me. I, if I can go to everybody else and I can go get all these people and we can get Nancy Grace and we can get anybody else out there to spread the word, I'm not going to worry about one anchor. I'm not. Right. Well, I say everybody, you know, needs to do it. I mean, if, you know, everybody needs to do what they can, no matter if they're this big, this big, or this big, or gigantic, you know. But no, wouldn't have been, wouldn't even want my, let him wipe his feet on my front doorstep. Sorry, not happening. It, it's just, it is what it is. Um, he needs to be found, and that's, that's all there is to it. But Chris, I'm going to ask you, you know, a, a same thing I asked Katie Waldo, uh, if you could say anything in this world that you rethunk this three weeks, what would you say to Sebastian today, tonight, right now, again? I mean, it don't have to be the same thing. It could be now. What are you feeling tonight? I miss him. I want him home. Look forward to him being back home. I'm looking to see, happy to get things back to normal. Where, what, uh, uh, you want him back home, you can't look forward, you look forward to getting everything back to normal. What's normal? I hate that word. I hate normal. Because what is normal? Because what's normal to me is not normal to someone else. So what's normal? Is normal where 
Because he doesn't do what you want, you can whip him with your belt, or you can throw all his toys out, or make him sleep in the garage. Is that normal? Okay. I'm sure a child would love to come back to that, Chris. A lot of chaos. Yeah. You know, I mean, it. I'm not a man of emotional words. Oh, we know that. But Sebastian, he knows. Deep down, he knows. Would um, what would you do if you could change anything about that Sunday? And I know you were not home, but what would you do if you could change anything about that Sunday? I'll say that one more time. I'm sorry, I misunderstood that. <laughs> I, I, if you could turn. No, he didn't misunderstood it. He didn't hear it because he's listening to something on his walkie-talkie thing, his radio. Something to do with his work. time and you could change anything about that Sunday, what would it be? I know you were not home. You were in Memphis. But if you could do anything over about that Sunday, what would you do? If I could go back and change anything, I wish I was able to work in town. Maybe things would have been different. Because we both would have been home. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, there's so many should have, could have, would have, and I wish I could have, and wish I would have. And I, I don't have the answers because I, I don't know. I mean, I know I got, I got my stepson's missing. My house is not whole. There's a big, big emptiness right now yeah yeah um somebody said it took you seven hours to get home um i, I don't know it, it's a seven it's a seven plus hour round trip from my house to memphis yeah no yeah it's not yeah so they're saying that um some people were saying that you like didn't leave right away and you were waiting and it didn't leave. we already went through all that so well and, and some some of those folks comment is correct yes yeah. look you knew at what 10 past six that your stepson was missing 10 past six you didn't start work till seven you wasn't up in your crane until at least 7 a.m so why did you go to work Climb up that 50 foot or whatever it is, sit in that crane, have a strap on you like no one business, for someone on the ground to put a complaint in about you, for your uh, site manager then to come and tell you to get out the crane, and then you left at between 10 and 11, which makes sense. Because if he left outside 10, 10 to 11, 11 to 12, 12 to 1, he says he got home about quarter past one, half one. So it makes sense he left about 10. So why was you at work till 10? And don't sit there and tell us you can't just get up and walk out. You was not even at work or had started work when you got that phone call. You wasn't at work. You may have been at the work site, but you wasn't up in that crane. Yeah. Yes. Because I can't, I could not leave. I can't just, it, it's not a normal job. You, you can't, can't just tell your boss, I'm out of here and walk out the door, get in your car and leave. Yes, you can. You know, I mean, there's, it wasn't in your there's crane. a lot of safety involved. You know, uh, yeah. Sebastian's dad, same, same thing. He's not going to be able to just be like, hey, I'm out of here and walk out the door. You know, I, I left as soon as I could, when I could. Um, what, um, hold on, hold on, let's jump up there. Did he say Seth would agree? Right? I think he did. I've got it in writing. Right? Seth said if she had phoned his head captain, right, they would have pulled him off his job. There and then. So if she defamed his head captain at 10 past 6, quarter past 6, whatever, he would have been pulled out there and then and said, look, you're so, there's, you need to go home. You need to contact your ex-wife. Right? 
or we've got your wife here on the phone to speak to her, or we've just learned that your son is missing. Your wife's just phoned us and told us your son is missing. You need to get back to hers. He would have done that. He said that. So that's BS. Let's see. Hold on. How many times have I said BS in this live? I've lost count. Somebody wants to know why you don't want him around your daughter. That is a that is a personal family matter. Okay. Um, we know what that personal ma family matter is now, don't we? Because you was holding that over Seth's head. That's why Seth come out and said what he did. Because you kept saying to Seth, if they don't back off me about why, if they keep going on at me about why, I don't want faith around Sebastian. I will tell them publicly. He, he was threatening Seth to like tell him to back off about my daughter. Tell him to back off. Right? Otherwise, I will tell him. And once they know about your son, they will not want to look for your son. So that is why Seth came out and said what he did. It wasn't right. I'm sure he agrees. But he said what he said because he's had enough of the BS from Chris. Right? Like holding it over him all the time. Constantly holding something over him. He's had enough. That unfortunately, that's not one I'm going to open up. Okay. It, it's not a. <sighs> well, okay. You don't have to. No, you didn't want to say. Right? You didn't want to say because you didn't want to be made out to be the bad guy. But you see, we found out the truth, Chris. We found out why Seth said it, what he did. And that was because you was threatening him with it. Tell them to back off about faith. Otherwise, I will tell them about your son. And then no one will want to help find Sebastian. Let me ask you this in another another yeah. a way. Let me ask you this in my way, not their way. Um, I heard that it's possible. Well, I heard that he is he supposed to be a witness in some kind of case that you have with your your <laughs> wife. Is that true? Well, okay. No, well. So I've I've heard this. No, it got nothing to do with a witness. Nothing. There was something. Right, now he won't go on JLR. Right? Now this is a bit hypocritical because he says he did his research into JLR. Right? Now JLR has written a flipping book about his past. He doesn't hide the fact he has a past. Right? His name, John Pages Jews. He's come out and he's made himself a better life. Well, a lot of them go into jail and they come out and do it again. Go into jail, come out, do it again. JLR didn't. He did his time, come out and did something with his life. Right? Now, he said he did his research on JLR and that he didn't like what he read and all this like and how JLR was diving into his, right? He didn't like it because JLR dived into the background and he found information out about Nina and that's how he got that Nina to talk, right? He found information out about this court case, this child custody case that had been going on for what, six, seven years? The little girl's what, six? So, say, five, yeah, you could say six years. Right, since she's a baby, really. And he didn't like that JLR of doing his research. Excuse me, Chris, did you not just say you did your research? So it's okay for you to do research on someone, but it's not okay for that person to do research on you. 
bit of a hypocrite there. Right, so anything. I do too. If I could get it, you know, out there somehow. I mean, from what I see, I don't, I don't know for a fact. There's, I know it don't get any easier each day that passes. It don't. They want to know if it's possible since y'all were on the phone. Recognize him and be able to call, and we can bring him home. And we can do that, and we have these platforms. Um, will you, I mean, consider doing something for me, though? Will you please consider talking to some of the bigger creators? And and, and it, it don't have to. He won't talk to them because they're male. Right? He go on Nancy Grace because she's a woman. If you watch that interview, and I'll be typing up the transcript for that one, don't worry. Um, it was, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, three bags full, ma'am. He was putty, he in, like being putty. He was so pleasant, so polite. And I sat there and watched that. I think everyone sat there and watched that live and thought, what the hell? This isn't the Chris we know, but we knew if he went, we even said if he goes, if he goes on that show, when we heard that Nancy Grace was doing a live with them, and he went on that show like he has all these other YouTube channels, being the Chris we know, she would have tore him to pieces. If she noticed, she asked him a question, and Katie went to answer, and she went, Chris, question for Chris, for Chris. Oh, you're talking to me, ma'am. She wouldn't let anyone else answer it. Now, that would be me. If I had a question on this live, and I'd have been a host, and someone put a question, and I had a question, say, for Katie, and he answered it, I'd go, for Katie, please, Katie, answer this question. You know what I mean? Please, Chris, back down and let Aunt Katie answer the question. Because I missed that. I must have skipped it. Because there was a part where she said, Katie, you, you, do, uh, you do have a voice. So why do, why do you let Chris talk to you, talk for you? And that's when it was so condescending. It was like, go on, you can talk if you want to talk. You know what I mean? But well, hold on, are you giving her permission to talk? Are you actually sitting there on a live and giving permission for your wife to talk? Piece of crap. Myself, Katie, and Seth all decided we made a pack in the beginning, hey, if we're going to do this, we're going to keep each other in the loop. We're going to talk to each other and ask. We're not just going to go out here and do our own thing. Okay. That has always been our pact. You know, we would call Seth and say, hey, initially he didn't want to do any type of interviews. And we understood that. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I said, hey, man, do you want to like phone in with us? Do you want to, you want to come to the house and we'll do this as a group? What do you want to do? We've tried and try and we want to do this as a group. You know, unfortunately, you know. No, Chris, Chris, Seth has said, like, he don't feel comfortable on these interviews. He doesn't. You could see he didn't feel comfortable. He's more, at, he's more relaxed when he spoke about Sebastian, and that's what we liked about it, how he spoke about Sebastian, right? But he wasn't comfortable with all these questions being asked him. Now, like I said, I, if I'd been on any live, if I was a mother and I'd have been on a, any live, I wouldn't have been asking questions. I'd have said, right, I know you've all got your questions to ask, but I won't be answering anything because all I've got to say is whoever has got my son, you better release him now because I will find you, I will hunt you down, 
and I will kick your door in. And you better hope the police find you before I do. So give me my son back. Or God be with you. Simple as. Somehow, somewhere along the way, we've all kind of gotten off track. And he's kind of gone out and done his thing. We've kind of done our thing. Uh, Mrs. Rogers done her thing. I think his sister may have done something. I mean, but it's... Everybody's getting... Right, I'm getting past that, please. I'm getting to the end. Everybody, regardless of what your personal opinion is of me, my wife, the situation, the, the bio father, anybody, it doesn't matter. You're a piece of I thank you for being able to continue to spread the word, be a part of this, and in a, any form, shape, or fashion. Um, uh, so why are you and your family or friends threatening, harassing, intimidating people out there searching for your stepson and your son, Katie? Why? Don't tell us you're not. Do not try and sit there and tell us you're not. Right? Because we know your father-in-law is. We know Chris's father is, stepfather is. And we know his mother is. So please don't sit there and tell us that you don't know nothing about that. Please. Give us more intelligence. We was not born fecking yesterday and just know that you got three parents missing missing a son that needs to be home and compassion is yeah. like i said in short demand and could be overflow with with people out there if we could just find a way to become all one united group and we can just do this yeah yes chris one united group with you in command oh yes Yes. Yeah, okay. So, with you in command, does that mean we just sit on our backsides and do nothing? Is that what you mean? With you in command? Okay. I agree. You know, I agree. It's, it's you know, sometimes it's hard, though. Something pops off or you hear this and you, you got to, you know, you got to just do it. And, again, like I told you when I first talked to you through there, um, I was just like, we got to set our feelings aside. I mean, number one for me is you have to understand. I have to think of all sides and I have to mm -hmm. do it until they say, and I think outside the box. I'm not like any of these other people. I'm not with them. I don't I really, you know, oh, there's a couple of like, bubbling on again. There, but bubbling on. Sorry, Smiley, you bubble on too much. Yeah, but anyway, I'm like, uh, but anyway, I had to get ready. I had to get prepared to put on my boxing gloves. <laughs> no, it, it, I mean, you put on boxing gloves things. Um, all I can say is, uh, I'm just human too, and I just want to bring awareness to. Right, that's the end. We're literally what two minutes away. And I'll tell you, typing this out just did my head in, really did do my head in. But it was worth it. I've still got to do some. Updating on eating and whatever on the where you know what I mean. Like, if you look at this, there's that's just highlight bits, but there's bits that I need to yeah. Here's that story of Rachel, right. It's up there, right? I'm going to read it to you now. Um, try and get in a bit more. Right. Chris, the story with Rachel is real simple. So it goes on, and I think this went on for flipping ages. I'll make this easy for you. So I've been made five times. I'm, I'm my fifth wife, and she's going to say, you're final. So let me make that clear. She's probably going to yell at me later that I didn't say final. But I've been married. Oh, don't. I've been married. Being married. 
You've been married four times. You're now on your fifth marriage. You haven't been married five times. Being means you've been married five times and been divorced five times. That word, this word. No, I'll see if I can get the highlight thing. No, that just changes. See if I can get that changed. Right. See if it changes it. No. No. Being married. You haven't you've been married being married four times. You're now on your fifth marriage. First time her name was Vanessa. First time her name was Vanessa. It doesn't go into much detail about Vanessa. Second time her name was Stephanie. It doesn't go into any detail about her. Third time her name is Rachel. Fourth time her name is Nina. And I gladly answer questions in any of my marriages. Out of the four ex-wives, three of them, to, to this day, I can actually pick up the phone and call them. And we can have con conversation like how good it is. My fourth ex-wife, which is the one I have my with my daughter, sometimes we can have cordial conversations, sometimes we cannot. We make that life and leave that there. That's why we go to court. They keep saying something about the right story of Rachel. What is the story of Rachel? And Chris goes, the story of Rachel, right? It's paraphrased back there. And she's gone, maybe how you all met and maybe how long did you all? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. This is the first time I'm hearing about Rachel because I haven't dug in that deep into anything. I just don't know. Like, how long was your married? Maybe. And how was your relationship? Do you, do you all have any kids? I don't. See, so by him saying the story of Rachel, he got Smiley to tell, say more. Right? So then. Uh, trying to get so uh, 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 oh, come on, come down. Let's go out a bit, let's just go out. Oh god, where the fuck is it? Yes. And yeah, I don't like that one. Ah. Oh, God. Right, so we got married and Rachel took a job where she's working down in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, as a civilian. And while she was down there in Guantanamo Bay, I guess promiscuity got the best of the best, best of the best of her. And she decided to be unfaithful. We ended that relationship. She went back to Cuba. You know, I packed up the house, I put all her stuff in a storage unit, gave one of her friends that lived in the area the key, told her the combo, set up the payment plan, plan for everything, like that. Um, you know, as far as I know, she lives in New Orleans now, and I think she just had a second child. So she's got a little boy, I think. A little, she's got a little boy, I think a little girl now. Right? But... He's very short and sweet on it, really. And I thought, hold on, you, mm, you actually answered a question. Because you got Smiley, because you paraphrased back the question to Smiley, Smiley then and opened up and said something. Right? And 
So if you look, maybe she was married too. Hmm. But I'd like to know more about his first, second and third wife. But I, you don't know if they've got married again. And as, as I said, there's a lot of sites I can't get onto. So I can't find out if they've remarried or if they've got a new part, what the married name is or anything. And I can't get the court records for their divorces because... They don't let me get them. I wish I could, because then it might state in there what caused the divorce. And why haven't they spoken out? Why hasn't the first, the second and the third wife spoken out? Because they phoned them and told them, look, if anyone gets in... I'm not saying this happened. This is a possibility. Okay, it's a possibility that they may be phoned them. So, look, if anyone gets in touch with you about wanting to know about you and Chris when you was married, what happened and all that, lot, keep your mouth shut. You know what I mean? They know what, all his exes know what Chris is like. And you're not going to tell me he was only like that with Nina. No. He was like that with all of his exes. He's controlling. He likes to be the one in command. That's why if everyone just fell into his plan, his way of thinking, we'd get on much better. We'd be able to get out there searching for Sebastian because he wants the control. It's like he won't go to the vigils because he's had no say in them. You know what I mean? So, you, it's the words I look at now. And so, when I'm still going to go through this, because as I said, there's a lot of twitches I've got to make to it. But once I've finished with it, I will, I'm going to, because I was talking to my daughter about um, printers. And she <laughs> was in Curry's or something and said, Oh, this is like the printer I've got. Now, the printer she's got is one where you can print off it, like you can send it from your laptop or computer to it, and it'll print it up, right? Or you can lift the lid, flip the lid up on it and scan something and scan it. I went, oh, really? She said, yeah, but there's something with the roller. The roller's not working on mine properly. I went, well, I'm not buying one of them then. You've just been a great advertisement as to not buy one of those. <laughs> so I'm looking into getting a printer as well but mm, over the weekend and next week during the day I'm going to be sorting out because where I live I've got a balcony but my balcony is closed in so it's got windows all around my balcony and I was using it for storing my the toys I have for Christmas time for my group that I run in Jung where I live in Dundee, right? So I was using it to store these parsley, Christmas parcels and things like that. So I want to get in there, sort it all out, get rid of all the toys that are broken. It's so telling that CP said the whole neighbourhood knew Sebastian and he acted like they were all good neighbours and Bobby told a different story. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's this interview was more telling than any of the others. Well, any not more telling, but you just seem to get more of you heard Katie talking little bits here and little bits there quite a lot at the beginning because he kept coming in and out because he was actually working. He was up on his crane. So every time he dropped off, or every time he said, oh, sorry, I didn't hear that, can you repeat that? It was because he was busy listening to his radio and having to do something with the crane. Now, that, I think, is out of order. He should not have been on a live. If you want to do a live, do it when you're not at work. 
Because someone, you could read the comments, and you may not like what you read, and then you're so built up and angry that you're taking it out with them down on the ground. They're asking you to pick this load up, and you're going, oh, feck off, will ya? You know what I mean? Because you've just heard something or seen something that you didn't agree with. So you shouldn't be working. You should be at home, be it on your phone or be it on your computer, whatever, but you should be at home in your five-wheeler or in your house, wherever, but not at work. You can be sitting on the flipping toilet, but not at work. Right? So, that interview did say, and we've typing it all out as well, it's like, Christ, I missed that. You know what I mean? I, it's like, that radio that come through, I didn't hear it all, quite actually said, and it said something, hold on, let's see if I can find it. Um... Uh, uh. Oh, there was something else you said, right? About wasting law enforcement's time. Because every time you phone up about this or that, Right? It's taking the search away from Sebastian, yeah? Well, every time you and your little cronies phone law enforcement upon these searches, right, you are taking those police away from not just looking for your son, but critically helping someone who really needs that help. So every time you call law enforcement on BHB, uh, on uh, Dolly, on any of these YouTubers out there doing a search or putting flies out, every time you do that, you and your little cronies, whoever they are, I don't know, right, is taking them away from doing something they could be doing, something of importance. Uh, yep. Yeah, because he said he was covering where he was working at the time, he was doing he was covering for someone. Right? And that shift was was it did he say twelve till twelve at night? And I thought, oh darn, that clicked and I thought, oh darn, you're at work. Right? Because I had my earpieces in while I was listening, while I'd be typing this up. I had my earpieces in. So because I had my earpieces in, I then heard more of the background noise. And I thought, you know what he is? I thought he was just sitting in an office somewhere on a walkie-talkie. Right? But he wasn't, he was sitting in that in a flipping crane and he was just covering it. And apparently that, that night he did that interview, this night when he did that interview. Now bearing in mind it was only three, and a half, three weeks, three to four weeks after Sebastian went missing, he went back to work. Right? And um, he was covering, and that was the last night he was working for them. So whether he's back at the other place where he was first working, I don't know. Because he did say he was then going back there and working nights. But we know that the only nighttime work they do is inside the building. They don't do any work outside. The cranes aren't working during the night. So if he says he's working the cranes during the night at St. Jude's Hospital, 
is lying. Because JLR has a video out there of where he walked past the work site and then he got confronted by hospital security. Right? He got confronted by hospital security. And so he thought, right, to, just to get him off my back, I'll walk around. He went down this side road and he ended up in this back street. And this back street was so dark, I was worried. For Jay Allard, for Christ, man, you could get jumped. You could get, and he even said, oh, God, where did that guy come from? You know what I mean? Because as he's walking down the road, he's just about to walk across, like, a, a junction. Like, where two roads cross over and things like that. And all of a sudden, this guy just come across me and went, Christ, where did he come from? So he was, he was there, and there was no crimes. Go back to JLR's videos, right? It'll show you. I'm not. I'm not actually sort them out. Um, try and put them on the description in the link, like when I put this up to YouTube, right? So when he he said he was working nights, because he said to Seth that time, look, I'm. I work nights at the moment, so I come home and I go to sleep. I don't have time to get on the internet and do this research and then email you yes or no back. You know what I mean? I'm on a different time setting to you. I thought, but they don't use cranes during the night, especially by a hospital because you've got sick children in a hospital. They don't want to hear the noise of a crane going during the night. They do not. Right? The last thing they want to hear is all this cranking and clanging and bumping and banging of this crane going back and forth, lifting stuff, putting stuff down. Right? He even said, like, depending on the job, what they're doing, if they're pouring concrete, he could be up in that crane for, what was he? 18 to 24 hours. I'd like to know where the toilet is. Because I can't go three hours normally. I mean, quite good tonight. I'm normally good when I'm on my lives. But in the mornings, I get up and I sit down. Maybe, well, I go to the toilet and whatever. Then I was coming here and I sit down. We've been sitting down and tell me, I've got to get back up again. I'm up and down like a jack in the box. Going, and the worst thing for me is every time I walk in my kitchen, I have to leave again to go to the bathroom. Every time. So now, before, say I'm going to cook myself something to eat, before I go in the kitchen, I'll go to the bathroom. Because I can guarantee you, as soon as I put my foot in that kitchen, I need to come back out and go to the bathroom. So where's the toilet if it's up there like 18 to 24 hours? while pouring concrete. I didn't realise the cranes poured concrete. I thought they had some other machinery that poured concrete. I'm going to have to look into that. Perhaps I do, I don't know. I really don't know if the cranes do pour concrete. But I honestly thought they had big machinery that pulled the concrete, not cranes. Thank you. Because um, he said if he's up in that crane and that pouring concrete, he can be up there 18 to 24 hours. And even BHB said, have they got toilets up in them cranes? You know what I mean? Because it takes them a while to climb up these cranes. It's not a five, ten minute job to climb up them cranes. It's really not. So, and I can't see them letting you go, hold on, hold on, just stop what we're doing. I can't move nothing. I need to come down. I need to go to the bathroom. Right? Half hour down. 
go to the bathroom, come back half hour. So you're looking at an hour maybe before you're back in the crane. Maybe. I don't know how long it would take to climb 50 feet up these little ladders. Right? So, I don't know if there's, no, we haven't got any big cranes like that round by us at the moment. No. The only place I know where I live where they'd have cranes like that would be up where, because we have the big oil rigs coming. Right? And you know them big oil rig platforms? They tow them in and they bring them into this docking area up. It's about, oh God, I'd say it's in a car, it's a 15, 20 minute drive away, depending on traffic. So that's the only place I would think they use big cranes like that, because they bring these, these uh, oil rigs, the decks in, they drag them in, right? And they get the repairs done on them. And then they get took back out again and put back on their platforms and whatever else they have to do, right? And I'll have to ask my grandson, tell you what, I'm going to ask Ellis this. He's only six. But today, they're bringing me home in the car. And we're talking about Simon's dad. And Simon turned around and said, my son is sick. There's only one thing I regret, and that dad didn't teach me more about the car, a car, about changing a tire on a car and all this lot. My grandson, even my son, was gobsmacked by it. He said, oh, that's easy, dad. You get the crank, you put it under the car, you crank it up, you take the wheel off, you put the new wheel on, crank it down again, and away you go. And my son is going, Oh, uh, uh, how do you know how to change a tyre? Where do you put the um, thing? Oh, that's easy. That under the, in the middle. Right, but it's not in the middle. It's near, like, by the tyre bit. But he said in the middle. I'm thinking, I'm sitting in the back seat by him. His mum's sitting in the front seat looking. What the hell? How does he know how to change a tyre? So when I see him again, I'm going to say, Right. how would you pour concrete? What would you need to pour concrete? He might know. Believe me. You ask him about the... I said, tell him about the big mushroom, babe. And someone said, the mushroom. And you're like, oh, you need, you need, the, you need the army and a uh, big bomb. I said, do you know what he means, Simon? He said, what? I said, the nuclear bomb. He knows about the armed forces and the nuclear bomb. And my son's going, oh my God, he's six years old. How does he know this stuff? So I'm going to ask my grandson. That's it, I'm going to ask him. He'll probably know. <laughs> but, yeah, he said in this live, he said to, he, he'll be up in the uh, crane for 18 to 24 hours if they're pouring concrete. So, it just, okay, so, but you don't, they don't work night and he said they do, he even said on one live, I can't remember what live, the cranes work 24 hours a day. No, they don't. They don't. Anyway, I'm sorry I put you all through that, but it, if you listen to the words more than actually sit and listen to the words, you will point, you will see the difference. As I just pointed out there, where it said about he been, being married five times. Being married. No, you been married four times. You are now on your fifth marriage. If by any chance you and Katie get a divorce, then you be married for a time. It's only a word. It's only one four-letter word. But one that four-letter word can mean so much of a, make so much of a difference. Right? 
Uh, let's have a look. Uh, ah. Oh, what is it now? It's got here. Uh, what did you leave it up there? What's their life insurance? It's like, smiley, she goes, she asked this question, like, she goes, what's their life insurance policy on him? I know people have been wanting to ask that. I just get that out of the way. Not that it's any of our business, but I guess if it, ha if it has to do with him missing, that's what they want to know. It's just a table, simple yes or no. You don't, you don't, we don't have to go into whatever. And that could be for you, you know, whatever he's got it from, his real dad, or you know anybody, I'm just saying. So she's li literally giving them the answers. I'm going smiley. But you see, I if, some, if I was a, a host and someone put that up, does he have life insurance? My question would have been, right, we've got a question here. Was there life insurance policy on him? Full stop. I wouldn't have said nothing else. I would have let Katie or her sidekick, Chris, say the rest. Right? Alright. But it's Right. Now, he knows the um, code to that front door. He has to know, Sebastian has to know the code to that front door. Could you imagine seven wives? Are we looking at Henry the... Could we be looking at Henry the Eighth? He had eight wives. So, Chris, you got two more wives to go. Well, three more, and then you beat Henry the Eighth. Right. Uh, let's see what it says here. Right. They talk about him locking the doors when he goes in and out that front door. Right. So he must have known the code to the front door because how would he get in the house after school? Because his mum was at work. Right, his mum was at work when he came home from school, most nights. So, he must have known the code to that door. So, why did the neighbour say when she saw him that time, on the Saturday I believe it was, saw him get out of the car and go to the post box. She carried on then up into the, into the garage. He skipped around to the front door, then suddenly stopped and went back round to the garage door. Why did he suddenly stop and go round to the back door? He was skipping towards the front door, he got to the front door sort of thing. And he thought, oh, I've got to go around the back door. Was there a reason he wasn't allowed to use the front door any other time? Was he only allowed to use the front door when he was at school, or coming home from school? So he knew, he knew the code to the door. And I don't believe anyone came in and abducted him. No one. Because what door did they come in? Because if they come in the front door, the neighbour across the road, who's got security cameras and ring doorbells, they're... Their security and all their window bars are protecting their house. We'll just seen someone come up to their front door. So did they come in the back way? Oh, but they couldn't have come in the back way because their camera would have seen them. He said this. Right? There was a point in this interview. Is it round here?
Uh, that be about the fingerprinting. BS. I watch, and it's not drama shows I watch. I watch the proper, full FBI files, and they show you exactly how they get a print of something. Now, if they can get a print of a body, of a body, which is porous, soaks in the oils, if they can get a print of a body, they can get a print off anything. It can be round because this guy was uh, had a fingerprint and it, the item was round, was circular, like a um, a tire iron, like sort of thing. And it was round. It was metal bar and it was round. And there's a fingerprint on it. So he set it up in this contraption. He got the camera focused in on it. Took a photo. Then he go back, literally move it. A little bit, take another photo, go back, move it. And it took ages to do, but he got all the photographs took of that print and then put all those prints together to get all those photos together to get the print. Right? So, in saying, I mean, can we take fingerprints? What can we do? We check. Then we go, you know how. You know, despite TV and movies, you know, that stuff, you see, it's not necessarily. I was like, um, what was he? And they said, no, because they explained why fingerprinting would not be, not necessarily be where they would get a hit. Um, okay. They can even pull off a print that is on top of another print. They can tell. When there's two prints on something, <laughs> they can pull that print off. <coughs> <coughs> if you've never, I don't know if you have in the U US. Yes, there is a regular door. Yes. Right? Now, during the pandemic, I was doing a lot of things, crafty-wise, right? And I was doing this thing with, um, it's like making dough, it's like, like making a bread dough, but not one that ro rose, it's just, right? And I put my handprint, my handprint in it. And then I would pop it in the oven on a very low heat for a little while, just to harden it. Now, if they want my fingerprint, they've only got to come and get my fingerprint off that. They can get it off anything nowadays. So what are you saying about the fingerprinting is BS. It's amazing. I watch these FBI things a lot during the day. I really do. So, anyway, I'm sorry I put you all through that. It was painful. But I hope you've learnt something from it, apart from all the BS you come out with. <laughs> Total BS for sure. Yeah. Does he think we sit here and we do nothing but watch drama programmes? I've always been into crime, always. For some reason, I've got a fascination about crime. Thank you, MCOS. Thank you. Right? Um, I've always had a fascination with crime. So anything to do with crime, especially when it's the real stuff, not this drama stuff, where they, oh, we've got a fingerprint, the next day they've got a hit on it. No, not that sort of drop, not that sort. It doesn't work like that. We all know it doesn't work like that. It takes weeks. Right? But now they can... To, even now, they don't need, a lot of places now don't take your fingerprints separately. They can take your print of your hand, right? And they've got that and they scan it and it automatically goes onto their big computer network they've got. So their print is there. And like I said, you know when you're a baby, they should take your finger, a child's fingerprints 
and their footprint dried straight away and have it on foil. Even put their DNA on foil. So if your child goes missing, boom, you've got the information there. Yeah? And it would only be used if your child had gone missing or as an adult, if you've done something wrong in your life, then they can pull it up. Yeah? But it wouldn't be out for general public knowledge. But I think they should do it. The fingerprint, the footprint and the DNA of every child born should be took and put on file. I've watched FBI come out and take, um, it, what was it those taking a print of? Was it the ear? No, um, yeah, it was the ear, the ear. And at the time they found this ear print, there was no uh, data thing set up for ear prints. There was nothing. And so they kept that print saved. And then as years have come on, they've been, and I mean 20, 30 years later or whatever, they now got the technology to fingerprint ears, right? And they, they had this suspect and they could never, because they didn't have the technology before, they couldn't never charge him. But as I said, technology advanced. So they had, they got him and took his ear print. They put it into this machine, scanner, scanned it, and it come up positive, it was in. So like 34 years after the crime, they had him because technology is so good now. And it changes every year. It's unbelievable. And so, when you talk about fingerprints, but not just that, they didn't even do any luminol. Now don't tell me, law enforcement, why you wouldn't take luminol. Right? You've been in that house ten times and you've never took, spread, done that house with luminol. Never. So, but honestly, if you want to watch some of it, watch the FBI files, the true FBI files. They are years old. Some of them are like back in 2016, 2008. But since then, technology has changed even more. So, it's amazing. I just watch, I am like, oh my Lord. They have just caught a killer of 40 years by an ear print. And then they had a body and they wanted to see if the body had any prints on it. So they put a tent over the body, like a makeshift clear tent thing. And they got this glue, super glue, right? <laughs> put it in a little dish put it on a heat pad, heated it up, and then after a while, it, it just all goes, right? The glue disperses and it clears. So they left it for about half an hour for it to settle in properly. They was able to get a full hand print off that body. So, it's, I'm just gobsmacked by what I when I watch these programs. I really am. I'm thinking, wow. You can't. It's like with the technology today, with the cameras everywhere. In in the UK, especially where I live in Scotland, as I said, I come out my flat. I get in a lift. There's a, a camera. I get out the lift. There's a camera. I walk out the building. There's a camera. I walk down the road. There's cameras on the lights and things like that. There's cameras on shops, there's cameras inside shops, everywhere you go.
can be tracked. Right? Right back to me coming all the way back home again. Right? So with that technology and DNA and fingerprinting and everything, and I was watching something about the police in Birmingham, where I grew up, about how they use the drones. And they've got two types of drones they use. They've got this big drone and they've got a smaller drone. The big drone is more effective on the night time. The smaller drone they use if they don't want to be heard. Because sometimes drones can give off a bit of a whirly noise. So if they don't want the drone to be heard, they use the smaller one. And they, they go in with the drones two streets away, right? So they don't know they're using the drone. And they go over the properties they are uh, uh, looking at, and they can then give the police on the ground exactly. If say they go to the front door, they can say, "Someone's out the back, is jumping over the fence into the next door neighbors to the left." As you come out the back door, go to your left. They're jumping over the fence. They're going down this alleyway, and they can follow that person on the drone. Then they can pick them up with the heat signals. Yeah. I remember once, and this is a true story, in Birmingham, right, at Christmas time, they always had this display of all these Christmas trees up by Birmingham City Council offices, right? And it was lovely seeing all these Christmas trees, right? And this guy who was out of his head, absolutely, absolutely peeked out of his head, got one of these Christmas trees and dragged it and carried it all the way down this road. And it's a long road. And the cameras and the police followed him from where he got the tree, followed him all the way down to the very bottom. And then... They went to him over the camera, spoke to him over the camera. Please put that tree back now. And this guy is standing there thinking, oh, crap. They said, please turn around and take that tree all the way back up that road. And they made him and they watched him and they had someone waiting at the top for him, right? And they watched him turn around and take that tree all the way back up this road and it's uphill, right? But they watched him take it all the way back up to put the tree back and to get done. I thought, that is fucking hilarious. The fact that they made him walk all the way down with it first before calling him out on the cameras. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, I've been caught. You know, like they say, a rabbit, uh, a deer caught in headlights. It was a bit like that moment. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, I'll take it back. <laughs> and it's so funny. Just so funny. Like, they watched him walk all the way back up this road again. But that is technology today. <laughs> but, um, so... When people think they can get away with a crime, there's no such thing as a perfect crime no more. There is no such thing. And if they think they've got away with a crime, don't think so. They've got evidence somewhere in the police. We've got our trust that Sumner County Sheriff's Office and TBI are doing their job and getting this information together getting a timeline of where Chris was and everything, where Katie was, where Seth was. And if I was Seth, right, I would go up to some of county sheriff's office and say, clear me or arrest me. You know where I was, you've got it on video, you've got it off my commander, you know every movement I made. So either clear me or arrest me. Simple as. If they arrested you, then, okay, you arrest me. 
and I'd prove I'd done something. Because I wasn't, you know where I was, and I'd prove I wasn't there. And I gathered for wrongful arrest. You know what I mean? But the need to start coming out, it's now been what? Four months, so it's over four months now, so you could say it's you could say it's been four months since they scaled back the search. Four months on Sunday since they scaled back the search. Right? So they've had four months to do this investigation. Four months. Now I know it's not gonna be a simple quick thing. I know investigations can take a long time. I know they can take up to a year, up to two years, even three. But please for God's sake put some your county sheriff's department and TBI. Don't let us down on this one. Do not let us down on this one. And I also think child services need to be looked into in Tennessee. This is just my opinion. But it should do that. It should call them out now and say, clear me or arrest me. You've had four months. You've had the information. And I'd say, and at the same time, can I have the gaming system back of Sebastian's and whatever else you've got of his? Because I want it put back in his bedroom so that when he comes home, his bedroom is just how he left it. You know what I mean? Because he hasn't got none of that back. And I think he needs to go to the offices and get that, in, that equipment back. They don't need four months to get the data off a gaming system. They don't. I'd love to have my laptop. God, they got me locked up for every child abuse case, every murder, you name it, every criminal case they've got where I live. They have me down for it. TL County six retaining pounds in that new construction site near the private. Oh. Pounds in that new construction. Oh, what? I've seen two. I've seen two in there uh, and one over by the cemetery. But I don't live there. I'm going on the maps. You know what I mean? Terry Lynn lives around there. And that interview Chris did with Terry Lynn, that was vile. Vile. How she managed to get through that, I do not know. Hands down to you, Terry Lynn, for that. Hands down to you. Because I have hung up on that little pervy little trap face little fecker within 10 minutes of him opening, 10 seconds of him opening his mouth to me. She walked it two days ago. I'm going to, I see a lot of uh, videos coming up and I never get a chance to watch them. Right, because I'm always watching some else or got some else I've got to do. So I need to start watching some of her lives. Aye. Because she goes on a lot of searches. So I might do that. I've got to sort my balcony out because I want to move the table that I've got in my living room. Where I've got my laptop and everything on. And where I do my diamond art as well because I do diamond art. I want to move this table into my balcony. So then when my grandkids come, I can just lock the door. And they can't get to it. And neither can my cats get onto my laptop or any of my diamond art if I'm doing it. So I want to sort my balcony out sometime this weekend or next week. But I really need to start watching those. I might just download them and then when I get five, like half hour or an hour or so, sit and watch them. I'm not joking. I love my diamond art. 
I have got so many. I've got a tub full. Right, a tub. You know them plastic tubs you delete. I've got one of them full. I think is it two, three folders full. And then I've got set some more sitting on top of those folders where I need to go into a folder. I need I need about twenty folders to put all my work in. Right? I just love doing it. I haven't done none this week, but I will try and get some done. I normally do it in the day, right, while I'm listening to some of these YouTubers. And I haven't done none this week. I haven't had the motivation to do any, but I do love my diamond art. I have a Facebook page for my diamond art. But, you see, we have people come on and they try selling stuff and promoting their own channels and we don't allow that we don't allow anyone to sell anything on our, this page yeah i've got the binders you can the folders you can buy with the clear envelopes in already and i can get about if i put two in each in each uh envelope clear envelope if i put two in it I can get up to 60 pieces of work in there. Yes. Hi, Charlotte. Have you seen this? No, I haven't. I've seen some earlier, but I've been on my live. What's been happening? What's been happening on the J Slater? Because I'll be back on that case again tomorrow night. Uh. Yeah, we had someone come on the site once and she gave us the, oh, this is my mother's work and she had all these pieces of diamond art that we need to sell that hadn't been done. And my mother had passed away and we we fell for it because, you know what I mean? So we posted it on the page and someone over here from the UK, her son lives in America, right, because he works over there, sent the money to the woman for this work, all these pieces of work, and yet she never received it. And when she tried to get in touch with the woman, she couldn't do it. And I felt so, so bad for this woman. So me and my admin, my friend who was admin on it, said, no, no more selling on the page. And we don't allow anyone to sell anything on the page no more. And I'm trying to get a, some videos made up. Because I've got a, and yeah, I've got a second YouTube channel. I'm trying to get some videos put together of me doing my diamond art, so then I can just put the video up, and then if anyone on my page wants to come on, come on, they can come and chat on the page. They want advice, what to do with this, how to do that. We can try and help them that way. So, but that's on my second on my other channel. I've got to, get to sort that out. Get that one up and running. But one woman come on and said, can you share my YouTube channel with everyone, please? No, that's my page. If anyone's going to come on a YouTube channel, it's going to be my YouTube channel they come on to. I've got a thousand, over a thousand members on my, YouTube, on my Facebook page. Right? Uh, let's see if I can... Find it on my phone. All right, let's have a look. I'll tell you how many I've got on my Diamond Art page. And okay. I've got three thousand seven hundred members on my Facebook page. So. If everyone was to join my YouTube channel, once I get some videos put out, I could have 3,700 members on my one YouTube channel if there's all to join. But, no, you know, uh, someone actually got on my page a couple of months back and they kicked me out 
They kicked me out of my own Facebook page, the page that I opened and I set up. Right? They blocked me, everything. So luckily, I had a good admin, right? And she went into the back office and she's going, she's messaging me, she said, you've been blocked. That's why every time I send you a link, it, it won't accept you. So she had to unblock me, right? Find the person who had done all the blocking, and block that person, and then send me the link again. Right? And add me and put me as admin again. Because I lost it all. Now two years ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. The woman who's on my who's my admin, she was diagnosed earlier this year with was it lung can uh, kidney or some form of cancer? She's just had an operation and she's in recovery at the moment. She's going through preventative treatment, right? And we had this come up on my page and I said, you know what? I put a post up on my other Facebook page. I said, whoever thought they was going to kick me off my own page, they thought wrong. You're messing with two women who are going through the fight of their lives at the moment, right? So someone, as measly as someone trying to block me out my own page, you're not going to win. We've got a fight of our own going on, and we will take you down. <laughs> and that's what me and my admin is. She's wonderful. She's brilliant. But, yeah, I've got to get some videos together so I can put them on my other YouTube channel and then I'll invite people. I tell them, feck enjoy my YouTube channel. But no, I've got 3,700K members. That's a lot of members. I remember when we hit the 1K, 1,000, I thought, oh, wow. You know what I mean? We're now at 3,000. So, yeah, I'm going to do some, when I do my diamond art, I set my phone up so it's over my work, so I can set it up today and then start recording on my phone and then transfer the video from my phone to my laptop and then I can put it on whatever, onto my YouTube channel. But, so, Charlotte, what, what's been happening with Jay Slater? I know, I know they've gone into the, um, go from me. I think they'll be scaling back the search very soon on that case. Very soon. So, because it's been, what, 12 days now? They've said today, I watched the news report today, they say, if he's out there, they're not looking for a person now, they're looking for a body. And they may never find him. But they're looking at the possibility that he, he just went and disappeared because he could, he wanted to disappear. Or, one, he's not alive. Two, he's purposely gone and disappeared. Or three, he's been uh, kidnapped. I think he's purposely gone into hiding. Anyway, well, that's another case, and we can just discuss that tomorrow. Thank you, Anyway, well, Charlotte. Um, oh my God, four hours. I'm going to have to go. Thank you, Cos. I'll be back tomorrow night with Jay Slater and the updates on that case, okay? Thank you, everyone, for being here. If you, if you like what you hear and see, please give this video a like. If you're watching on replay, please consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you a penny. Give this video a like. It really does help. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Good night, cause.